Aha. Good. Great. So, <clears throat> Ville was talking about food. And, yeah. I have food. <laughs> so, I should be okay for some time now. And, um... <clears throat> I have some other things here. So, I'm at the office. And, um, well, I have also a green screen set up here somewhat. And I might have to use it in the later apps. The virtual reality things. Then I have a infinite supply of tea. <laughs> and uh, maybe, maybe I have to use sleeping bag and have a rest at some point. But I hope that I don't have to deal with that. So let's just see how this will go. And uh, yeah, so that's about where I am and how this thing is going to go pretty much. <clears throat> then <clears throat> yeah, so the app list looks still the same. I had no time to to modify it, but uh, I did make this back up here with um, 20 more applications to select from because I think that I'm gonna have some trouble with some of them so yeah hopefully it's gonna be possible to do these 100 uh, apps but I don't really know if it's gonna uh, turn out like that or not because I'm kind of tired and it was a day full of meetings so <laughs> let's see I I will take it easy and try to keep it as uh, steady pace as possible. Hi, Marian, and hi, Ville, hi, Feritva. So, <clears throat> yeah, I think it's four o'clock, so basically time for me to start doing something. And um, I have this message here on the top that says that uh, I will check the chat more carefully during my breaks. Um, <clears throat> I don't really know how often I will take the breaks, but uh, I might take several times per hour. And um, yeah, like if I eat something, then maybe I have a look at the chat and hi, Mohammed. So yeah, I'm not gonna pay full attention to the chat because it's uh, tiring to talk and explain code and uh, also look and read what you guys are saying there but uh, I will look if I'm struggling if I have some bugs that I can't figure out maybe you guys can help me out and if not uh, then I just struggle somehow let's let's see how it goes uh, yeah hi Cosmin so yeah the first app is going to be a gallery it's basically going to be an application that holds all the other applications so it's going to be one page that holds all the other um, all the apps all the hopefully 99 apps that i'm going to build but uh, let's just say that i'm really really happy if i get to uh, 50 apps in this thing so <laughs> um, yeah a little chickening out but uh, let's see how it goes and I haven't really prepared for it so it's kind of I tried a little bit canvas programming uh, the other days but uh, yeah I really don't know how it's gonna go it's gonna be a surprise for me too so um, I did this seriously last time when uh, I was teaching the course this VVD course a year ago so since then not so much research is usually less about coding and more about reading papers and uh, things like that and you write code but uh, you write a very very well thought algorithm so I miss coding and now I'm gonna try to <laughs> uh, maybe make it feel like I had enough of coding for a while. So let's see what happens. Yeah, okay. So this is my setup. I'm gonna use Notepad++. Uh, plus plus. 
and on the right side it's uh, the empty page. I'm going to be working in a fresh directory, empty directory, and um, the only file there now is this gallery HTML and it's empty so this is going to contain the uh, gallery uh, code and it's going to load all the other files so I'm going to structure the things pretty much so that I have one file per project and um, it they will all be loaded from this gallery HTML I don't know yet how this is going to work in practice and the structure is going to come by itself but yeah so these things are there and for the designing tasks I will bring up uh, probably I will bring up paint from time to time and I also have this drawing tablet here so I'm going to make some sketches there and maybe solve some math things or whatever but uh, pretty much um, notepad environment and um, the browser there on the right so that I can see the result of what I am doing. So that's it. Uh, five minutes over time, so I, I am late. Uh, yeah, great start. So let's see. Um, I'm also kind of nervous. <laughs> this it doesn't really happen usually. But somehow this feels special. And, uh, I hope it's going to be OK. I also kind of lost my touch at writing and talking at the same time since I wasn't teaching for a long time. But uh, maybe it starts to develop as I write. So I'm going to start with basic HTML and I'm going to have here probably a very small amount of code in this one page for um, basic CSS and um, a little bit of JavaScript that initializes this gallery but then I'm going to separate the other, the other pieces of code. And the body, I think I just leave it empty and I'm going to add um, dynamically canvases here. So I'm going to build, nine, I'm going to need 99 different canvases here and I should write a script for that. So something like that. looping 99 times and here I need to generate the canvas and add it to the body. I actually don't remember how to do this. I have to <laughs> already check to see how um, and I'm not reading official documentation usually because it's faster to just find some pieces of, of code that work somehow and I think you should be able to see what I'm doing also here yeah so this looks important I think and um, this document create element yeah this create element function <laughs> you can see that I'm uh, I'm kind of um, out of shape, so to speak. Yeah, so this piece of code is probably going to be helpful for me and um, I'm gonna add to the body all the different canvases 
uh, one by one. And um, here I initialize a canvas. Um, this I think is, yeah, the type of, of the object. And then I have to give it an ID. I'm going to call it canvas underscore and concatenate the value of i so that they have distinct IDs. So it's going to be canvas one, canvas two, canvas three, and so forth. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, let's see. So, um, width and height, I think I'm going to want to keep them all similar sizes so I don't have to always think about how big is one and the other. And I'm probably going to have some grid layout, but. Uh, First, I'm going to start with just listing them in, in the page. So I'm not really good at HTML. I'm going to focus more on algorithms and on the canvas stuff. And OK, I won't use any position absolute if, <laughs> if you think it's a bad idea. So um, let's try 1,000 times 1,000 the size of the canvas. And uh, yeah, I don't need any of these, I think. Um, Okay, this seems to be duplicate with this one maybe. Let's see if this does anything. So I'm going to save the file. I'm going to close this and go back to my gallery here and refresh the page. And when I refresh the page, nothing happens. I'm also opening the console to see what is here. But I do see in the elements tag here, all the canvases have been generated they are just invisible. So by default, the canvases are transparent things and you can actually see, uh, I well, at least I can, I'm not sure if it's visible to you, but there is a small scroll bar on the right. So I could, uh, I'm scrolling through something, I just don't see anything at the moment. So I will add a very little bit of CSS uh, to be able to see something. Um, maybe I'm going to say that I want to have the body, I want dark colors. I'm going to be here for a while and I don't want to look at white screens all the time. I actually don't want, uh, don't like to program on black background uh, in this dark mode, but this time I, I really have to because it's going to be really tiring. So uh, I'm going to put a dark background, let's say, let's try it with black and um, to see if the canvases are really there I'm gonna add a background to them so by default they are transparent um, let's make them white just for now and uh, refresh the page still nothing and I think that you actually can see a small black border here Probably because the canvases don't have any padding. They are just gluing themselves to each other. And I don't see any border even when I'm scrolling. So let's work with this a bit more um, and add some padding. I'm going to work with these viewport uh, units. So let's say Nope. Or do I need margin? I never remember these things. Okay, well, margin seems to do something. So I am seeing something there, but the canvas is so big, it actually doesn't fit in my screen. So I'm also going to shrink. Yeah, I added padding already uh, between them. I think in the end I'm going to have a grid, so I'm going to have uh, maybe maybe I'm going to have three of them in each row, and then there will be nice number because 99 is divisible by three. So 19, uh, three in a row, and then 33 rows. So I'm not going to add the padding just to the bottom, at least not not now. But I need to resize these canvases a little bit. So uh, I, I mean stretching them. 
so that I, I see a full canvas here in the screen. So let's try to make it 80% um, of the viewport height. And they are all going to be squared canvases. So I'm going to do something like this. And yeah, now they are now they are OK. OK. Yeah, 5 uh, VH was really big. I think I'm going to make it much smaller there. So something like this, I'm pretty happy with. Uh, yeah and i'm always going to work on the project that is the top canvas so the uh, past projects the ones that i'm building are gonna go lower and lower i'm always going to update the first one uh, in the top and for now i'm pretty happy with this but uh, yeah m maybe we also align these somehow so Uh, so they are not uh, on the left side of the screen. Okay, so this simple thing is what I'm going to start with and later I will think about, I will come back to this project and maybe design something better when, when I have some outcome. But yeah, so this uh, hard-coded value, something that you should avoid, I'm going to just define here um, constant. and uh, reuse this constant everywhere. I want to minimize these as much as possible. All right, things still work. So now the first project, let's see what I had here. I'm gonna be turning back and forth from the PowerPoint where I have the projects listed yeah okay great thanks for the code um, but at the moment when i'm debugging i don't want to have the grid yet so i'm gonna come back to you and copy the grid afterwards the problem is uh, if i already do the grid now the canvases are too small to interact with so i prefer to have bigger in the beginning when i'm debugging and doing things like that and then i'm gonna take um, the grid layout from you and and try it all out but uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go back and forth from this PowerPoint uh, where I have the projects listed and I'm just going to try, <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, and I'm just going to try to go one by one through them. So the first one is uh, Starry Night. You probably won't see me doing this because uh, I'm only sharing this uh, notepad and the browser here and um, it's too much trouble. If I shared the whole desktop, there will be so much toggling that it becomes confusing if I'm checking these apps all the time. So I need, uh, I'm need. i gonna want a new project, a new file for this Starry Night, the first project that I'm going to do. And I want to write the code in an external file. So yeah, I actually don't remember how to do this. I know this is really basic, but uh, I haven't done this for a long time and I really miss it. And uh, uh, that's the whole reason for this thing. So my structure is going to be, I'm gonna have a JS file uh, directory and inside this JS directory, first project is going to be uh, starry night and dot JS. So now I'm going to create this directory here. You don't see me doing this because I'm not sharing the explorer. Um, and starry night.js. I'm creating the file and loading it in Notepad now. So basically, uh, the code for this project is going to go here. And it's going to be. Um, 
probably a bit messy in the beginning until I do the first few projects. And then I'm going to have to think about um, architecture, like how to organize these so that I don't write too much code because much of it is going to be kind of redundant. Um, so yeah, in the starry night, uh, I want to initialize it in the first canvas. So it's going to be something like um, I'm going to make a class called Starry Night inside that, and I'm going to give it the first canvas. So, document get element by ID. At least I remember this one <laughs> canvas underscore one. So, here I have. Uh, a new class I'm going to write a new class and it needs to make stars on this uh, first canvas that is hopefully the one on the top let's just see yes so it's canvas underscore one so let's see how this code is going to look like in starry night I'm going to write a class starry night and here the um, constructor the parameter that I give to this constructor is going to be the canvas that I'm working with and um, yeah so far let's try to work with this so I'm gonna get the context from the canvas that I'm gonna draw draw on um, like And on this one, now I can draw things. So stars are kind of like points. I'm going to draw small circles. And to begin with, I'm just going to try to draw a circle if I remember how. I think I do. Um, draw arc. No, no, it's arc. Arc function. Um, let's put it in the middle of the canvas. So canvas size uh, divided by two, canvas size divided by two and it needs a radius let's just give it a hundred this is for me to test if the methods work and um, it needs uh, also how many degrees I want from the circle to be drawn and I want all of them from zero to uh, pi times two so pi times two is uh, 360 degrees in radians and you need to specify that to this I also have to say begin path before I draw something and then stroke it I think that by default this should work and it should be black the color of the stroke yeah so the circle is coming there but um, because my canvas is really big it's like a thousand by one thousand um, the line is really thin so these canvases are now stretched to fit my screen and the line here is actually even smaller than one pixel it's uh, kind of hard to see so I'm going to play a little bit with um, the style of the stroke and I'm going to say no uh, it was line width I think uh, if I want it thicker so let's say five pixels and, and see what happens yeah okay <laughs> I'm getting a bit more confident it seems like I'm remembering things um, okay so this is just one <laughs> one uh, circle there not helping me much um, so maybe I need a um, function Um, draw stars or no 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 I think that how should I structure this so I would like to have methods here inside this project and uh, this draw stars is becoming too too general outside the class let's um, 
have a method draw star it could be a helper method let's say and uh, it needs a context so let's do that and here I'm going to just call draw star on the context from here and this is pretty much going to be just that piece of code but um, it doesn't work I think I need the, this uh, keyword here yes so the reason I want to do this is because uh, I want to parameterize this function and I want to tell it draw it on the context okay this is a bit stupid I think that I can um, make it uh, an attribute of the class and I don't need to pass it anymore as a variable here but uh, this star is going to have a location where it should be drawn on so let's give it a location a different one 300 300 and here I'm going to say location as the parameter note this is an array so the first the value at 0 is 300 and the value is 1 at 1 is 300 so here I'm going to have to replace this with location of 0 and location of 1 so this is going to draw one star here but because I made it modular and this function is uh, written in this um, modular way I can now call it again at a different location here and now I have to stars now <laughs> these don't look at all like stars at the moment and i'm gonna fix that uh, first before i draw these two stars i'm going to say um, okay draw dark background so stars are gonna be white and the background is going to be dark so I'm pretty sure that I will refactor these quite soon uh, because I'm probably going to draw different colored backgrounds on, on uh, many different projects so I don't want these, this code to be just specific here but for now um, this is how I, I do it um, and here I'm going to draw rectangles so is it fill rect maybe and starting at zero zero and I'm gonna do it all on, on the entire canvas um, I should also store the canvas um, as an attribute of the class so that I can uh, access it easy so yeah here okay let's see if this one works well everything is black so if I want to fill the stars I'm going to say this fill style uh, white and um, I'm not gonna stroke it I'm gonna fill it it doesn't work hmm style oh yeah okay they are back here of course they are <laughs> really big and uh, this is not really how how stars would look like but uh, yeah so more functions I want now to draw many of them and in a loop so I'm gonna do something like um, I'm gonna have them random and say randomize get random locations and I'm gonna start with an array um, an empty array and add random locations to this I'm gonna have a parameter n for how many I want to have and um, something like that so 
So each location has an X and a Y, or in my case, a zero and a one here. And I would like them to span over the canvas size. So I think I'm gonna just use that uh, global variable. So I'm multiplying the value between zero and one here with 1000 so that it spreads everywhere. And then um, I return this array. So if I do here get random locations and I say that I want 100 stars, um, this should work. Yeah, very gigantic. Um, supernovas <laughs> or something like that but um, hmm. yeah let's make them smaller this is a bit better but I don't like it very much it's kind of static I would expect stars to blink as I watch them so I would like to add a little bit of animation here um, but it's it's getting better and the size of this I would like to also be different so star some stars are are dimmer than other stars and I think that I would like this to uh, appear in in our case so I think that I need to actually make a object uh, for this star and it will have different properties like its size and it will also animate uh, need to animate its uh, its radius so yeah uh, well I don't know if this would work as a screensaver because screensavers should move um, that's the point of screensavers you want them to move so that dead pixels don't don't form and but this will move soon so yeah a screensaver so a star object and this is going to have a location I'm gonna store it in its attribute and uh, for a radius I'm just gonna do it randomly here I don't care about it so much so radius equals to mat.random multiplied by well, this four value was nice, so let's multiply it by hmm. four by two and add two to that. So it's going to be um, that. And uh, so these are the values there, and I'm going to give it a method, draw, and this is going to draw on a context, on a given context. So when I draw it, I basically copy this draw star code here, and I say, I don't need the, this attribute here anymore. It's going to come from the other, other value. So this is the uh, attribute name here. Yeah, so here instead of um, get random locations, I'm going to rename it to get random stars. And our array is not going to have just locations here. It's going to have, um, OK, this thing might go off screen. Hmm. Yeah, something like that. I'm going to add to it new star and uh, the location is going to be the parameter here. So this is fine. And um, yeah, and after I get them, instead of doing draw star here, I'm going to do um, 
stars of i dot draw. So bear with me for a while. I'm um, yeah, and draw it using this context. So I'm a little getting used to this, and the structure is not yet clear even to me yet. Uh, after a couple of projects, it's going to be a more more uh, clear what I'm trying to do here. Okay, I have an error right now. Locks is not defined. Yeah. So for some reason, this doesn't draw properly. I'm getting them, I'm looping through them, and for each of them I'm calling the draw method on a given context. So what is the problem here? Hmm. Oh. No, this looks pretty good. So I have different radii for them and different locations from them. But the draw just... Yeah. Very weird. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ah, uh, my location is uh, is an attribute of the object right now. Yeah. Okay, back to this, but um, a little bit different if I use this radius now. So some stars are a little um, bigger than others, and I think that's nice. Now, I also want the star to blink, like I said before. So I'm going to put here a function update where I'm going to change its radius somehow. Um, maybe for starters I'm just going to reinitialize it in this same way and see what happens. So here where I'm drawing every star in this constructor, uh, I would like now to start uh, some kind of interval or um, an, a loop that animates every multiple times per second and I'm gonna try this like let's try like this um, let's say 30 times per second this works in milliseconds here so now what I'm gonna do if it works I'm not sure if this will work. I'm going to update this and draw. Nope. Cannot read property. Okay, this doesn't need that. Okay, um, that this object here is not anymore known. So this is a problem because now this relates to the set interval function. Yay, <laughs> thanks Frank. So this set interval function uh, loses this value here and I don't really like it. Hmm.
Okay, I have to think about it. Let's see if this works. Okay, um, they actually blinked a little bit, but uh, the problem is they are being replaced. Uh, I mean, they are going on top of um, bind. Okay, uh, I don't follow. But uh, meanwhile, uh, I need to also draw the dark back background around. So again, so the problem is that um, the stars are getting drawn on top of other stars and uh, yeah this is like hmm. oh uh, the dark background doesn't have a fill style set to black Wow, what happened here? This is not what I expect to happen. Yeah, okay. Okay, hmm. let's try. I don't know this syntax very well, so I'm gonna experiment with you guys. No, this seems not working at all. I think that there is some kind of problem here. Mm, yeah, probably this eye is looping through all. not sure how the arrow function looks like but I'm gonna try to solve it some other way let's see if this makes any any sense mm. okay so it works fine in the beginning or if you have some kind of sample I can <laughs> I can look Okay, this length seems to be 100, so that's just fine. And mm, yeah, quite many of them here. Yeah, something, something is strange. Yeah, arrow function is, is fine, but something is, is weird. Stars object. Okay, let's try something else. No, that that didn't work. So I think problem is I don't know. I'm drawing it. I'm updating just its radius, so not changing anything else. But then for some reason here I only get one star as a result instead of 100. They only blink in the beginning. <laughs> yeah. I think m this is some bad trick, so I don't want to use it. Mm.
how about I do a method here, animate or draw frame. Let's see if this works. I'm going to do a draw frame here and I'm going to say draw update and draw all the stars. So this is going to be avoiding now these issues. Um, I just need to make the stars also uh, an attribute of the object here. And in the set interval, I say draw frame. Stars is not defined. Uh, yes, here I need to use this this value again, and I don't, or I still need this here. Me is not defined. Okay, um, this context. Wow, I'm getting the same thing again. This is so strange. This is really weird. Oh, I'm so stupid. This part has to be above. <laughs> I'm redrawing the background every time I'm drawing a star. So the background is masking it. Now they blink, kind of. It looks a bit better. So, <laughs> yay. <laughs> wow, I'm, yeah, I'm slow at this stuff. But let's see, I'm going to get in, in the mood, I'm pretty sure. As more components are coming here, I think it's going to get faster, but let's see. So this Starry Night, let's say that it's done now. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Maybe I'm going to cheat and, <laughs> yeah. Hi, Duku. Long time now, chat. <laughs> so. I'm going to make a, another one. I'm going to cheat and I'm going to make a new project, which is going to be constellations. It's not on my list, but uh, it's my marathon, so I can do what, <laughs> whatever I want. And uh, I'm going to just leave the code the same. So this is now duplicating the code, which is something you should never do. Um, but I'm doing it for now because I want to have a couple of projects here and then I will refactor it so that I minimize the redundant code. But this constellations, it's just going to draw some kind of constellation on top of the, um, of the stars. So I'm hoping this is going to be faster. And um, Yeah, and now you should see this paint screen and hopefully I can do some kind of quick drawing here. So the only constellation I know is actually is actually the Big Dipper <laughs> and I think it looks something like uh, something like that. And then you have the North Star somewhere here, which is a bit brighter usually. So this is now 1000 and this is 1000. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw some stars here at uh, P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6 and P7. So P1 is going to be something like uh, 100 and uh, 700 something like that then this is gonna be let's say 200 and 700 this is gonna be 300 and let's put it let's have it 650 Four hundred and six hundred, and uh, these are gonna be a bit lower. 
So let's say also 400 and 300, and this is gonna be 500 and 300, and this is gonna be 500 and 600 okay so I'm just gonna hard code those there but I just got an idea that I think I'm gonna have to implement this kind of drawing app really soon because uh, some of the other projects like the animations I'm gonna need to know these coordinates really quickly so I would like that the app gives me the coordinates where I click and I don't have to do this kind of stuff by hand because it's really tedious so I do have one app coming up later <laughs> that is the drawing app, like a whiteboard app. And I think that I'm gonna do that sooner than, than later because this kind of stuff is gonna, be, um, is gonna be useful. So now I'm gonna input these coordinates inside my code and draw some bigger stars there and connect them by a line. I'm gonna try to make this uh, constellation visible. It's just... Uh, uh, it's a different uh, thing it will look different and i'm happy with that so let's let's try to add this extra project there so here uh after i'm drawing every star okay i need i need to add some more more stars so this sorry here yeah new star and this star object needs the location value so these are going to be now my my locations and the first one is 100 700 and i'm gonna copy this multiple times and say 200, 700, 300, 650, 400, 600, 400, 300, 500, 300, and 500, 600. So as it is, they will not really be noticeable. I would like these to be larger. So I'm going to have this star be larger by adding another attribute to its constructor, which says is larger. And if this is defined, uh, I'm going to add something to this radius now okay the class needs to remember that it's larger when I update its blinking value here and add the value of 2 again so let's see what we are getting oh uh, I think that you're still seeing my... <sighs> yeah, sorry about that. I was typing and you were still, still seeing my paint screen by mistake. But... Um, yeah, nothing is different. I wonder why. Oh, uh, it's, it should be another project. This constellations is not defined. So let's see how I manage this. In the first um, main file, I have to include it. And here, starry night, I have to put it now. I want to put constellations in the first canvas and starry night in the second canvas so that I have two of them 
Okay, star has already been declared. I'm basically don't need now this object from here um, because it's already in the starry night. I just need to make sure that the starry night file contains the updated version of the star, which can also display the larger ones. Okay, so it doesn't work. How can this be? So something is wrong here now in the constellations file. Does it work if I don't import Starry Night uh, anymore and I just debug with the constellations? Let's see. No, now it says star is not defined because it's in this other, other file. So I'm going to move it back in the constellations and debug like that. Okay. Hmm. Uh, this is funny. <laughs> yeah, hey, thanks, Sindra. So this is funny. <laughs> it, uh, it seems to be causing me problems. Oh, yeah, uh, I made a mistake. The um, star here expects um, an array as the location and then a value of true as the second argument so this is one problem another problem okay I'm missing a closing bracket here is larger is not defined so yes I'm missing the this um, specifier here okay so now actually I have something and I can see the dipper but my uh, messed up paint skills <laughs> look horrible Let's also draw the lines between these stars. So the dipper is made by the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stars. So I'm going to draw lines between these last seven added stars and see how they look like. So for Um, hmm. Okay, I think I need to do like this, or let's put it like that. And I need to draw a line between the previous star and the next star. So is I minus one here. So I need that a line. Mm. F 
from the previous star location to the current star location and um, stroke style I'm gonna set it to white so yeah to current star location here uh, let's just see if it works no and I'm getting quite many errors here stroke is not a function uh, yeah this context is missing also here wow this is so beautiful <laughs> yeah I think I need to start at 6 here because that will consider the previous one so um, I really messed up basically um, my coordinates are upside down because in the computer the x and y are different <laughs> so the zero zero case is here and it grows like that in the, in the bottom direction so it's upside down but it's also really really ugly so <laughs> i need to fix these coordinates a little bit to make it look nicer and i'm just going to try to eyeball it here so let's see what happens mm. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna move this a bit up. Well, <laughs> something. But uh, no, it's actually bad. I think these need to be something like 900. Okay. So I'm going to have a really a big need to make this drawing up soon. So it gives me these coordinates without playing around too much. Um, hmm. Hmm. No, I don't like it. Yeah, that's pretty good, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, that took much longer than I thought it will take, so I'm going to uh, follow the plan and not spend it so much on stupid, silly things. Okay, shooting stars. Hmm. Maybe I now spend some time and refactor this so I really don't like it at all, the code structure, what we are having. Um, before the next project starts so first uh, let's try to see if both of the projects are here at the same time if they if they work and um, d redefine this starry night that we had previously so now i have two canvases here one with the starry night which is project two and one with the um, constellations which is project one at the moment 
So the thing is, I want now to think about software uh, engineering and to develop a way that I minimize the amount of redundant code because this cannot, cannot be the situation. I'm basically copying the entire project from Starry Night into these constellations and it doesn't make any sense. So the star object is defined, I will define it in the Starry Night um, project because it's the first one that is um, initialized there. And um, I'm going to clean up this code a little bit. So I don't need this draw star function anymore. I, I wasn't using it. This draw frame, okay. Another thing I need to consider is that when I have uh, many different applications running here in the browser at the same time they will use a lot of a lot of processor so i don't want them to animate all the time especially the more complicated ones that come later so i would like them to pause and start only when my mouse is hovering over a specific project i would also like to know which project is which so that it has some kind of title there so these, all these things I would like to sort out now in the beginning and spend some time to get it right because if I do it properly, um, I'm going to have less work later on. So it start is going to be more slow than the others, hopefully. But, uh, but yeah, so let's see if I can do this somehow. Basically, what I want to do is create a new class that is called project and then use inheritance from that class to define project specific properties if that makes any any sense so yeah like everybody is going to have this interval because I'm gonna make animations or simulations or things like that and then uh, after the structure is clear and I'm handling the intervals in the same way. I'm hoping that part of this code is going to, to disappear and become, become clear. Let's, let's see. And here, I don't like the way I'm doing this. So I'm not going to have want to define these objects one by one in this way. It's too tedious. So maybe I define an array here like um, projects and this one is going to have so far um, constellations and starry night and here i'm going to loop for through them so And basically, I need this code just once and initialize each project individually. So first constellations and then starry night, but on a different canvas. So something like this, but here I need to pass it um, I. Okay, I'm gonna start this with null here so that I can keep my convention and uh, starting the canvases at one. So this is uh, location uh, index zero here. And uh, it's not going to be considered if I start it like this. So starting at one. So now I don't need to do anything more. When I add new projects, I just have to add here the constructor of that project and uh, that's the only change I need to do in this file. So that's going to save a lot of, of work, I think. OK, it actually works. So <laughs> this is something good. Yeah, and uh, I want now to do that inheritance thing. So each of these projects are going to have some kind of 
common trait. Let's try to add these, these uh, yeah, let's try to do it. So I'm going to create a new JavaScript file. I'm going to call it project.js. And um, yeah, I'll just copy this constellations project here and try to see what the common functionality is. So constructor, this is important. It's going to happen in everything. So all the projects that I'm making I'm, are going to be linked to a canvas. And this canvas needs to be stored as part of this um, object. So here, um, I mean, as an attribute of this project, this is going to be something useful definitely it's going to be important then uh, this part also is going to happen there will be an interval uh, and a draw frame function that's going to do something now of course it's going to do different things on different projects but this structure here is the same and i don't want to write it again and again and again so i'm going to write it once for this project and then inherit uh, this project in all the other ones that I'm doing. Now here in the draw frame function I can just delete it and this will be overwritten in all the other ones. I will also want to store um, this interval because um, I want to clear the interval when my mouse leaves the canvas if that makes sense. So let's see i'm now gonna remove these functions they are specific to these and try to edit these other files slightly and say extends project now this part already happens and this part already happens in the super class right so will this work? I don't know. Let's let's try. Uh, project is not defined. Starry night is not defined. Okay, I think uh, I need to include project in this one. And. Okay, must call super constructor before assigning this. Okay, this is something important here. Like that. Okay. So this seems to work just fine. Let's uh, edit now the constellation, the constellations file the same. So I can say here canvas and um, of course this code looks quite similar except the extra stars, but now I just want to clean some things up and um, and reduce the amount of redundant code and maybe do some little more things. Let's see. Okay. Uh, everything must extend project. So this is, yeah. Okay, so now both of them are here. That's fantastic. But, uh, Let's go back to the project and try to do that thing that I don't want them to animate unless my mouse is over them. So let's see if this can be done. Um, I would like to add some event listeners uh, to the project on the canvas. So yeah, let's see how this goes. I'm gonna say, um,
I don't need to specify it here because it's an attribute of the class. So these event listeners, um, I want them to listen for things like if I am um, leaving the canvas or if I am entering the canvas, things like that. So I don't remember how to do this. Um, I will look at it if I can find. Yeah, it's something like this. So I'm going to add to the canvas an event listener and not on click, but on mouse over. And when I do this, when I do this uh, on mouse over, I'm going to say um, if this interval is null, I'm going to reinitialize the interval that redraws every frame. And on mouse out, I'm going to say clear interval this interval and uh, assign it to null so that I, I don't know if it assigns it to null automatically when I do this, but uh, I want it to be null because of this other mouse over event. So let's see what happens now. If I go back to my code here. Hmm. Me is not defined. Yes, this uh, trick here. I just don't have access to this anymore and I don't know how to do it in a better way. It's kind of stupid. Um, let's see if this works. No, it, it doesn't. So, so inside here I have the this of this function. <laughs> Um, of this value here and I I need to do something like that otherwise sorry yeah let's see if it works mm. okay so you can kind of see now when I go over this constellations file it starts to blink and when I move the mouse out it stops blinking so this is and uh, it blinking can now alternate between the projects so if I do it like this class name this okay I will try that I if I if this stops <laughs> starts bothering me so class name this but no because that would be a static static variable I don't think that it would work but mm, and this is a project so it's the class that you inherit I think it will not work but this seems to be okay now so it's doing what I want but I would like to deactivate them so when they are deactivated I want to be clearly seen that this project is not running I'm gonna draw some kind of gray overlay over them so that they look disabled uh, this is gonna happen also on this um, hmm, on this mouse out it needs to happen here so um, Hmm. show disabled and I need to have a function here a method and say something like uh, this context uh, fill rect zero zero this canvas with 
this canvas height and um, the fill style I want it to be an RGBA value so let's put it something like um, 100 100 100 and an alpha of 0 0.5 so this is going to give me a gray transparent gray and um, yeah well let's see what happens no it doesn't work um, sorry this is not the method this is an attribute here and uh, okay so it's not perfect some weird things are happening here sometimes well okay yeah if i'm moving really quickly the mouse over this corner i'm actually getting multiple uh multiple overlays being drawn there yeah i know that these bind call and apply exist but i'm not uh, i don't know how to use them and i think that i will i will avoid <laughs> yeah hmm but yeah so this almost works a little bit a small issue here Okay, first I want to have maybe a little lighter gray. Yeah, I think this is nicer. And I would also like to show um, the class name. <laughs> yeah, what Ville says. But uh, I want to show it, basically the name of the project. I want it to be displayed on top as a text so that I know what project I'm looking at. So maybe I'm going to do that here. I know there is a fill text um, function. Hmm. Yeah, but I don't remember how to put its um, font and things like that. Yeah, okay, something here. Let's try this to see if it works. And uh, fill style, what would go good over this gray thing? Let's make it the blue. I'm not sure how it looks like. Okay, hello world is actually here in the top left corner and it's very small. Um, I don't like that very much. I want to put it in the middle. So something like that. And let's make it bigger. So this is going to be... Hmm, might be it's kind of okay but not very readable i think maybe some orange yeah this is better and uh, i like this aerial font better but it's not in the center <laughs> comic sans Okay, I'm not sure who Code Ninja is, but that's what one of my students <laughs> said I should use during the VVD course. <laughs> uh, maybe I do that. And I think I have to put MS at the end. Let's see. No, I don't remember. Uh, maybe Comic Sans is enough? Hmm. 
or uh, this capitalization no okay uh, two different words and uh, that ms was there so i remembered something right yeah that that is perfect but the text is not aligned so it does start here in the center of the screen and the bottom part of the text is in the center of the screen i would like it to be really in the center of the screen and for that i need to use this um, there are two functions this text align and text baseline um, properties text align i think was center and text baseline i think is middle so this is now better but i don't want it to say hello world i want it to say that class name but i'm not sure how to get the class name how about if i just type here this uh, sorry mm, this is the text what happens if i just put this does it refer to the class name no it says object object okay but uh, it does say here starry night so it's the name of the object hmm class name could be a uh, could be one of the attributes no or uh, no this is undefined hmm yeah thanks tanya <laughs> this class name okay uh maybe with small n no damn javascript <laughs> huh no this is this is something else i think type of maybe it's this type of ho oh, ho yeah object <laughs> thanks a lot no it's not a not a type of name could it be name nope huh. this constructor to string 
No, I think this is some old, old syntax. It's confusing the, I can't search for it well because it thinks class is, a, is the HTML CSS class and uh, not the JavaScript class uh, object way of defining objects. So I'm not finding. Hmm. Here it says that it should be class name, but no, it's it's the CSS thing. So constructor name. Let's try also that. Wow. <laughs> Yay. Okay. But uh, I want them all to be disabled in the beginning because if I don't disable all of them in the beginning, um, well, it will eat up my processor until I hover over them and then come out from them. So everything should be disabled in the beginning. So here I have an interval, I'm drawing the frame. Maybe I just draw a frame. In the beginning so that it looks like something. Um, that's it. And I put interval equal to null. No. <laughs> it gives many errors okay so what is the problem aha uh -huh. okay this draw frame i cannot do it because the draw frame function is not defined um, it does things here um, after the objects and things like that are, are done. Let's not call it at all here. Refresh the page. What? Why am I getting... Why am I getting the drawings? I'm not drawing anything here. Ah, okay, this code has some, um, has this stars draw here. So this is also something I don't want because it's, it's being done here. So it's redundant code. I'm gonna remove it. And uh, same from this starry night. So all I do is initialize the stars in both of them and then nothing. And now when I refresh, they are empty, but when I over them, when I do a mouse over, um, yeah, this is good. But this draw frame needs to happen inside these functions once. Like that. And uh, show disabled also needs to happen. So note that the show disabled comes from the other class, the parent class. So uh, basically I don't have to worry about this at all, this structure at all here. Okay, now it's what I want. So I have Starry Night and I have the constellations and it's, it's good. I mean, uh, it doesn't use my processor in the beginning only to render one frame and then to show it disabled. I still don't like that I have to do this every time, but it's not that a big deal. 
now get random stars this function is also kind of stupid here because it's going to be the same in the constellations there so maybe i'm going to need some smarter way to to do this later on now i don't mind that it's a duplicate function here but uh, yeah draw dark background this is probably gonna be very a very common thing to do i'm gonna put it in the project yeah but not all projects need this feature so after the project ends here in the bottom i'm just gonna put utility functions so this is gonna be called uh, uh, this is just going to be a regular function that is going to draw a uh, dark background on a given context. And um, every time where I'm calling this, now I need to specify the context uh, like that. But I don't need this function here anymore. So I'm simplifying the code even more in this way. Uh, so I can remove it also from this other place. Mm. Like that. And uh, I don't think I need it here anymore or here in the constellations file. So I'm starting to be a bit happy with this. This project um, JS, maybe I should call it also, maybe I should move these to some kind of common JS, but so far I, I'm okay with this. This is doing all the work and uh, yeah some error now um, hmm. i will just use the constant value so canvas size here this is not recognized anymore inside there so it took me a long time to get this but i kind of like it now so i think it's pretty okay Mm. but it's still doing this annoying thing like if i'm moving the mouse just on the corner there it's adding another overlay and another overlay and another overlay on top because i think that only mouse out is triggered somehow i'm not sure why so if the interval is already null i don't need to do anything because it has already been disabled but if it's not null no it's still still appearing there what hmm. or maybe i know what happens this interval okay this interval starts but is destroyed before it has time to run that's what happens here so i actually because this draw frame is called after 30 milliseconds so if my mouse moves mouse leave instead of mouse out yeah i think it's let's try but uh yeah it's still happening so uh, one way to do this is before i uh, to fix this 
is before I do the draw frame, I'm gonna, be, before I start the interval, I'm gonna draw the frame immediately. So this interval waits now for 30 milliseconds before drawing something. And if I move the mouse really quickly in and out, it's going to not draw anything because it was really fast movement. So it, the interval was canceled, but then the uh, disabled appeared again. So I think that if I draw the frame immediately, it may fix this. Yeah, uh, so that was actually the thing. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Matti. So <laughs> this year I didn't do any kind of sports amazing thing, but I decided to do this coding thing. <laughs> I guess I'm. I was too lazy to do a running or cycling or skiing. But skiing season starts soon, so get ready. <laughs> uh, okay, constellations uh, done, starry night done. Two hours almost passed and I just have two projects <laughs> yet. <laughs> so this doesn't look really great. But um, yeah. Let's try to add uh, something else here in this project class that is gonna be very helpful for us uh, as we go. So how about a click listener? I'm gonna add a click listener that maybe... tells me the location of my mouse inside the screen. So I think that this is going to be helpful in uh, later on. But how to get this? So I need to basically figure out how to get the cursor position from the from the canvas. And I think I'm going to just google it. So Something like this, I remember the function that it kind of looks like that. So um, let's have it also some kind of a utility function here. So get mouse position at a given canvas. And I think this EVT probably is this event here. So um, I need to get the canvas again and pass the event here. All right, so let's see what this gives us now. I don't like this X and Y because later I may use 3D points or 4D points or 5D points. I like to work with many dimensions if possible. So if I have an array and the first element is X, the second element is Y, the third element is Z. The fourth element, I don't have letters anymore. And it may happen later that I need to work in higher dimensions for some projects. Or maybe not. <laughs> Let's see. But uh, yeah. So. Uh, and now I'm logging it here into the console. So let's see what happens. If I refresh and now I click, okay, if I click, I get some coordinates, but they are not really what I expect them to be. See, I'm clicking now on the right side of the screen and I'm expecting this to be 1000 because my canvas size is 1000, but now it's being uh, stretched because of this um, vertical, um, this VH thing that I'm using here. So I'm scaling them according to the size of my screen. And even though they are canvases that have 
um, sizes 1000 by 1000 uh, this seems to be giving me pixel uh, values or something else I want here to get 1000 for the X coordinate and I'm not getting that so what I want to do what I think that I should do is normalize this value somehow so maybe I divide this by by that and this by that and let's see what I'm getting now so now it starts at zero here on the left still not what I expect it to be so what is happening here oh no this right is not good I need the width basically so right minus uh, minus left here uh, I think this is the width so this is the width of the value and here this is the height of the value so now when I'm getting the values yeah so this value now is almost one I have a normalized value between zero and one if I want to get it scaling up to the canvas size I need to multiply this by the canvas size so multiplied by that and I don't like to work with such long numbers they are hard to read here in the debugging and I have plenty of pixels there so I'm just gonna round these values now you probably don't see this part of the screen I'm sorry about that but uh, yeah um, I'm not gonna try to format those better so now top left corner here values very close to zero and bottom right corner values very close to 1000 1000 so it, of course my clicking is not perfect but um, yeah and the middle of the screen values very close to 500 500 so I got this to work and this is gonna be useful later on I'm I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna use this somehow but for now I'm just going to log this log this value okay yeah what's the next project yay <laughs> really slow but uh, let's see shooting stars so the next one is shooting stars I'm going to copy the starry night project I'm going to name it shooting stars and um, it doesn't need this class definition because it was already defined uh, the star was already defined previously in the gallery I need to load shooting stars and here um, I need to initialize the new project it will happen in this for loop automatically so I don't need to worry about it and now when I refresh the page I have shooting stars I have constellations and I have starry night so because of the way I structured the code basically I, I don't have to do many things to add a new project and I have all the behavior that I want um, in this kind of um, consistent way and making this like without re we, without copying pieces of code of course I'm copying now part of the stars because it's shooting stars so it's gonna look pretty much like the starry night but with some moving stars mm. 
but I'm copying as little as possible. So, well, not as little as possible. I think you could make it even better, but let's just say I have to start to do things quicker if I want to have anything real in this marathon. So shooting stars, I want them to shoot when I click. And I know that, hello, Andre. <laughs> And um, I want basically the stars to shoot. Maybe I want a shooting star to come when I click, or maybe I want a random shooting star to come. Let's see how, how it would work. In either way, um, let's go to the shooting stars project. I have here some random stars on the background so this is something i'm gonna do because i want it to look like a starry night where shooting stars appear i don't like it very much i think that i could simplify this code even more but i don't no should i hmm. is it too much code here draw dark background get random stars this i don't really like this should be something like get random points and then make them into stars or, or something like that okay but let's go on and maybe we refactor a little bit later something more but i'm just hoping that because of this refactoring from time to time even though the beginning is slow at some point it becomes faster to make projects so that's my secret hope here but uh, let's see I need a shooting star class and uh, maybe I'm going to copy this star code and uh, modify much of it. So the location, it's still going to go in a location, but I don't care about this larger component. It can have a radius, that's just fine. Um, maybe we start the radius with zero. Okay, for now we started with two, but uh, I want it to kind of appear and disappear. And if in the beginning it's zero, then uh, it's kind of like uh, growing and shrinking until it goes away. Maybe it gives a nice effect. Let's, let's see. Then the drawing is pretty much the same. I just want a small circle there. But in the update, I want the location to change. So here, Okay, let's not do anything with the radius for now, but uh, this location something like that. And I want to sometimes draw shooting stars, uh, add shooting stars into the context so this shooting stars is empty in the beginning and when we draw a frame with the probability i'm gonna put a low probability like uh, if math random is less than 0 0.1 then uh, this shooting stars I'm going to add to this array a new shooting star and um, let's put the location at random. A random location I don't want to put it in some specific location I, I think it's up to the star where it wants to appear and shoot um, so these are added to the shooting stars and then I want another for loop so the stars will continue to blink but the shooting stars when they update they don't blink they move 
uh, on the x-axis with some kind of speed here maybe the speed could be also a random value maybe some stars are gonna shoot faster than others some kind of random value here let's see what happens okay nothing happens <laughs> i was expecting that something will happen but uh, no okay so what's wrong this math random less than 0 0.1 is this ever firing i'm writing here an exclamation mark yeah so it is firing it should add something here so how about i log the shooting stars array length it's growing oh yeah i have shooting stars of i as to update and and redraw on the canvas so okay <laughs> this is kind of a, a lame lame shooting star and uh, very many shooting stars <laughs> so i don't like it i think that hmm, probability should be lower 0 0.3 maybe now the star i really like it to start with a radius of one something really small but then i want this radius to increase while i update it and i want the speed to be bigger so let's have a small variation in speed but a higher speed to begin with maybe something like this okay now the star is getting bigger i want it to somehow get bigger and then smaller and fade away so i want it to start at zero so it would be invisible but then to go bigger and then go smaller and i think that i can use the sine function so sine function starts at zero goes up to one and then goes back down at zero and this is the part of the function that I want to use. It's actually from zero to pi. So basically this will control the size of my star from nothing to something and then to nothing. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm going to say uh, radius, let's say, um, step the first step is going to be step zero then here i'm going to say step increases by a small value and i'm going to say that the radius is equal to math dot sign of this step now when i do this uh, the radius is going to be between minus one and one because the sine function uh, goes also below to minus one but I can say that um, if this step is greater than math dot pi uh, this radius is equal to zero so I don't want it to become a negative radius um, 
there's no such thing really and um, after a certain amount when the star disappeared I don't want it to appear again you notice that the sine function looks like this but what this picture doesn't show is that the sine is a periodic function so actually it starts to have again the uh, values from 0 to 1 to 0 to minus 1 to 0 to 1 and then and, and so on so here I need to take care of that and then the radius okay but 1 is gonna be a very small value so I want the maximum to be scaled up a bit so I'm gonna put here maybe something like 5 and see what happens so yeah hi Chaitanya <laughs> so shooting stars okay something is happening some stars are, are coming there they are appearing and they are disappearing it actually looks kind of okay-ish yeah I would like it a bit faster so maybe this speed could be something like 20 here um, I would also like it to for these shooting stars to appear on the right side of the screen so I now consider that yeah okay good point but uh, I still don't want the star to get back big again so Thomas if I do that then uh, the star might grow again uh, even though what Thomas is saying is that I could make this um, function basically move up a bit so that zero would be on this line here and then I don't have negative values but then at some point uh, the star might get bigger again so it's kind of weird defect going on and I want to avoid that from happening but yeah um, so here um, maybe I want to generate these to be not any kind of random value I, I want them to be on the right side there's no point for the shooting star to appear too much to the left so let's have it appear in the second half of the screen uh, by putting here um, adding uh, half the canvas size plus some random value in the second half of the canvas size so basically here I'm uh, telling it that somewhere random is going to appear in the second part of the in on the right part of the screen so with this now they they are only appearing somewhere here in the right part of the screen but I don't see them very well I think that I should have some kind of trail for the star so what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna say this is the location but I'm gonna also say um, add another attribute here for the old location so old location would be this location before it changes so that means that uh, I should probably initialize it here as well and I want to draw a line from the old location to the new location because when you see them on the sky they actually leave this kind of line like a trail behind them and I want to do that in this drawing function so instead of drawing an arc here I'm going to move to location and um, align to uh, okay move to old location and align to the new location and um, 
then I need to stroke and uh, this fill style should be stroke stroke style let's see what happens now I get errors <laughs> um, this is accepting two attributes so this thing turns this uh, array of two items into two different parameters it's uh, like a shortcut nothing is happening They are identical. Um, both the old location and the new location are the same for some reason. But I'm saying here that it should be this location and then I'm changing the value of this location. So. Is this some kind of reference? Is it taking it like a reference? Hmm. Let's see. Um, I don't think I fixed anything. <laughs> but uh, let's try it. No, it, it doesn't work. So it could be like that. Hmm. Well, if it's like that, if it is indeed like, like a reference here, so I'm thinking that if it's a reference, then uh, I'm basically updating old location also after after location is being changed. Let me undo this a little bit. It, it was some stupid idea. And uh, hi, Piotr. Thanks. <laughs> um, maybe I say something like this. Okay, uh, something worked. It's a little better. I think it's still really slow, so this movement should be faster, the movement speed. Yeah, even faster. I think something like 50 here okay but um, hmm. but now the line width this line width here should be the radius I forgot about my super fancy radius sign function here so now it's kind of thinner in the beginning and getting thicker and then thinner again. I don't like it very much. I think that uh, it should have more locations or something like that, but I'm going to move on. I think it's good enough. Yeah, so uh, next project, it's Snowfall. Let's see, Snowfall. 
I'm gonna copy Starry Night again. Uh, I will open Snowfall now and um, declare it here. Mm, capital F. Now this is gonna have snow and this get random stars. No, I don't want this anymore. Um, I'm gonna say empty array here or hmm. Yeah, let's leave it an empty array here and say generate snow particles. So this is gonna be that. Um, yeah, this stars should be snow. I want it pretty much the same kind of thing. And generate snow particles, I guess I can still have the N here. Hmm. But now I need a snowflake object. Do I? <laughs> yeah, sure. So I need a snowflake object here. And um, again, it's gonna be generated at some kind of location. I don't need this is larger thing here at the moment. Let's have the snowflakes also have random, um, random radii. And um, when we update this, so what needs to happen is that the location here, uh, the Y component of this location has to increase by something. Let's give it also a speed. Just playing with the values a little bit. So now I'm generating snow particles. Um, yeah, let's just leave it the same as, as it was before. So this is now going to return our snow particles, pretty much the same code, but with minor tweaks here. Let's see what happens. So refresh the page. Now I have snowfall, shooting stars, constellations, starry night. So all of these similar Okay, snowfall, yay, it's falling <laughs> and then it's disappearing. So I want a trick here that when the snow is going off the screen, I want it to go back up the screen. So the same snowflakes actually regenerate again, look like they are coming back again and again and again. So that way I don't use up processor for nothing. And uh, I think it will still look okay. Let's try that. So in the update, um, if this location, um, the Y component is more than canvas um, size, that was my global variable. I put it back at zero at the top of the screen, basically. So now it kind of looks like snowfall, but uh, snow doesn't just fall like that. Small is, snow is really uh, light and it's affected by wind. It's affected by, by many kind of things. And I would like to play a little bit with the change in location here. So this speed, pretty much you can consider it as gravity. But uh, many intricate things can happen with the snowflakes. 
and I want to play with this and see what I can get. So this location of zero, let's try to add to this value a random number. And let's just see what happens. Nothing. Seemingly nothing, or it could be something very small. Let's multiply it by five. Okay, you can see that they slowly move to the right and they jiggle a bit. I, I like this jiggling because this is what happens when the small snowflake is kind of affected by the wind. Uh, what I don't like is that my snow now is going off the screen in that direction. So um, I would like to have checks for that also. So if the uh, zero value is exceeding the canvas size becomes zero again and maybe our wind is going to blow them up opposite direction also so let's prepare for that and say that if this is less than zero uh, the location becomes canvas size so what i'm doing now is that when the flakes are exiting the screen they are teleporting on the other side of course uh, if you look closely you, closely, you will notice that, but because of all the jiggling and all the things that happen, uh, nobody really can tell unless you tell them to look for it. So now it looks like the snowflakes are moving to the right. So there is a wind going to the right. But sometimes the wind is different directions, so maybe snowflakes that are further away would move to the left and snowflakes that are closer move to the right. So I think that it would be interesting if based on this radius I take the bigger ones in one direction and the smaller ones in another direction. So let's see how I would do that. Mm. If this radius is bigger than um, two no it's always bigger than two so this is going to be between two and four if it's bigger than three i consider it in the foreground and then i'm going to say this but if the opposite happens i'm going to negate the value here so basically um, the foreground wind and then the background wind. Now, to me this looks a little bit more, more realistic. Maybe we add some more snow, maybe 200 flakes on the screen. And I kind of like that. Um, one more small thing. When I'm making it go, I oh know, I think this is just fine. I'm happy with this. So now we have our snow snowfall effect also here. One, two, three, four, four projects and more than two hours passed. So basically, <laughs> um, I should have done already 10 projects, but uh, <laughs> let's see what happens so next one is rain okay um, i'm gonna copy snowfall this time and call it rain and open this one in here i'm gonna load here rain.js and uh, initialize the rain object, which is going to be here. This is now rain drops. Generate rain drops. So you can see that this function that generates all these things, it actually looks the same. And I don't like this code. I think that I have to do something about it. But uh, 
for now I, I just want to progress a little more and let's see they, they are all too too similar this should be generate random locations or something like that and then to convert them to the object but I still can't think how it would be nice to, to display now draw dark background I guess I can keep it for now let's let's see uh, raindrops also update and are also redrawn um, raindrop object so this is now different object rain is not affected by the wind so much so it's gonna have quite a different physics here and um, I think I need again to keep the old location because I want to draw them as uh, thin lines so my radius no more fancy things they are all going to be or okay maybe I can have some kind of variation here so from one and uh, between one and two I don't want them to be very thick and the speed I think this can be still there um, the same trick as before move to old location and um, line to location and um, stroke again this stroke style and uh, this should be radius now update i want the uh, vertical location to go with the speed and i don't want anything else except this bounds checking so yeah this is pretty much it let's see what happens so what <laughs> um Oh, um, I'm creating snowflakes <laughs> instead of raindrops here. And now I get error. Um, wow, I'm really making the same errors again and again here. This uh, move to and line to accepts two parameters and I'm giving it one array object, so I have to fix it. nothing uh, I think they might be black lines nope hmm. salut tolika <laughs> yeah so huh. what is happening here line with they should be they should be things and it should work but it doesn't hmm. Oh, again the same problem uh, with this old location I need to update it before this changes hmm. I will open the shooting stars project quickly and um, copy this code from here wow <laughs> something interesting is happening <laughs> um, yeah something interesting is happening you see kind of like rain but it's not rain it is this is not how rain looks like this is some uh, something else but you see also those long lines so this is happening with the old location is um, 
below the new location so this is something interesting it kind of looks like i don't know like those old movies and when you see those kind of lines moving around this is <laughs> yeah <laughs> my my screen broke so this needs to be fixed basically i don't want to draw them or um here where i'm fixing this so i don't care about fixing the horizontal axis just the vertical one i'm also going to move the old location to zero and this is going to be fixed but it doesn't look like rain so again that that problem rain moves really quickly you barely see it and you need to add here a very big speed so okay still doesn't look like rain <laughs> it's it was maybe even better before than what it's now so what's the problem here there are many problems so first of all everything becomes aligned at some point because i'm making the things um back to zero at, at the same time so this is this is one issue that it's coming there and i don't like this to i don't want this to happen in the beginning uh, this issue is not very big but then it it starts to be a problem so i think that here when they become go back to the top i actually don't want to do this and i want to subtract the canvas size from it this is gonna maintain the relative uh, differences but here i actually see periodic movement so it starts to look like a periodic movement because uh <laughs> yeah re retro tv effect <laughs> okay i will do that <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah good point and then i'm gonna do it uh mix it with the virtual reality things and uh put it on top of the webcam good idea let's do that so <laughs> um hmm. i'm gonna undo stuff <laughs> and save this as retro tv effect um i'm just gonna leave it as is let's let's see if it works retro tv and um retro tv error <laughs> okay rain is uh, already declared yeah in the retro tv i yeah and then here the raindrops um i'm gonna leave them the same but the object here needs to be different so i'm gonna say retro lines retro lines and uh, this is gonna be the object that is gonna be defined here let's try it again okay i'm getting errors all over the place um probably i undid too much here so let's see okay yeah again i'm doing this <laughs> so many times nothing in retro tv what is wrong so generate raindrops raindrops okay again that problem with the old location wow so i'm gonna open now the rain project and uh, copy this i undid too much so 
I, I'm now trying to get back to what Frank said. Okay, retro TV effect, great, but I don't want to draw the raindrops. That's not part of the effect. So basically, um, yeah, if the Y location of the raindrop is um, smaller than the old location of the raindrop well if it's bigger um, then draw it nope uh, old old location <laughs> it's the opposite <laughs> so. so now normal drops are don't appearing are not uh, appearing anymore but I'm just getting these weird lines from there so this is my retro TV effect <laughs> so yeah thanks for that and the rain this is just fine but um, I'm gonna make the drops somewhat transparent I think that will look nicer you don't really see drops when it's raining so instead of white here I'm gonna put the uh, RGBA maybe something like that it's a bit more realistic at least to me I don't like that um, everything is moving with the same speed this is not good the speed is pretty much the same for everything and I think that I was wrong to, to assume this here. I'm gonna put here 50 and 50 because some drops could be in the foreground, some can be in the in the background. And uh, yeah, the periodicity is also kind of gone now. You don't see it because some drops are faster than others and it kind of breaks the, the pattern. Um, I could make let's see how far we can go maybe 500 it's too slow so I can't really do too heavy effects on this computer because I'm streaming at the same time and it's using very much uh, CPU but it also indicates that probably the effect is not good if it's so uh, difficult to render these these things so um yeah i prefer to keep them on the light light side here okay so rain retro tv snowfall shooting stars constellations starry night okay great yes i like transparency andre <laughs> uh <laughs> yeah okay what's next fire okay this is interesting it's a little different than the other things isn't it uh i'm gonna take what do i take what's more similar to fire let's take snow and i'm gonna copy it i'm gonna say fire fire js um in the gallery i'm gonna say here fire fire and um, hmm. yeah that's it so in the fire extends project um, I'm gonna make it from fire from particles it's kind of silly but I 
know that some of my students did this and it looked really nice so let's try it with some 100 fire particles um, this has to be like that and I'm just gonna call it the object is gonna be maybe flame like a, a small single flame <laughs> okay okay Mr. Anatolie <laughs> I won't show the rain anymore um, flame now this flame I don't actually want to generate it like this anymore let's stop doing this already uh, it's gonna be no flame in the beginning it's gonna be empty but uh, inside the draw frame function I'm gonna leave it the same so these flame particles are going to be added um, in the draw frame function so flame fire is gonna just come from itself all the time new particles are coming in I'm not gonna recycle anymore I could recycle maybe I'm gonna change it later but uh, I want the fire to have a source and I want to see it growing from that source yeah spark I could also do that but I'm thinking about doing um, fireworks later and I think it's a better name for the firework class I was thinking about spark as well so let's see and I want this flame to start uh, all the flames to start in the middle of the screen so at least for now and uh, add them to the fire array yeah okay so new flame particles going into my fire at every frame at least at the moment and uh, I don't need this anymore good riddance I, I don't want that kind of same thing again now the location I still give it there radius okay um, let's have it same size in the beginning it's gonna be easier to tune like that and the speed now I want them to go up yeah sure why not let's let's see what happens and uh, here this is just fine at least for now in the update I want it to be minus equals to speed and uh, let's just leave it like this and see what happens wow look at that flame <laughs> isn't it impressive <laughs> yeah it's not great but it will be <laughs> great i hope uh bigger radius let's say 10 yeah <laughs> um, transparency maybe no okay the fill style <clears throat> I want the color to become transparent as the time goes by so this uh, step is equal to zero in my update I'm gonna say step plus plus and here I'm gonna say the color is going to be RGBA white but with the transparency so um, this step divided by let's say 10 so 10 um, I think you can't see this part of the screen so
Yeah, now probably many of you are going to tell me that there is this uh, weird symbol that I could have done it nicer, but I'm going to do it like this. <laughs> I don't know how to use these fancy JavaScript notations. Okay, and this lifespan, um, how long will the flame stay? Uh, on the screen, let's say 20 frames. Okay, let's see what happens now. Opposite to what I wanted, <laughs> great. Uh, yeah, mm, one minus this. So I want it to start off visible, but become uh, become transparent. So now it kind of looks, hello Sam, it kind of looks like a flame a little bit, but um, but what? I mean, it's kind of like going out. It will kill my processor. <laughs> Great. Uh, because they are constantly adding new particles there. I think the speed is too much. I'm going to put it five here. Uh, maybe even less. Mm. Like that. And I'm going to add some kind of randomness to the starting location. No, I'm just going to add some randomness to the movement here. So the x-axis is going to be random minus 0 0.5. So this is now going to give me a value between minus 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. So it may do things like that. Not very noticeable. I'm going to scale it to by four it's a little bit more like a flame if you know what i mean now the initial radius is 20 bigger and i'm gonna decrease the radius by 0 0.5 what Oh, I'm getting errors because at some point the radius becomes negative. So this is something I don't want, definitely. So um, if I get a value if the step is more than the lifespan I want to remove one item I think this works I don't remember how this function works um, else I just update them when I remove the item, this is quite a common mistake. You also need to go back one item because the next item took its place. So some kind of funny effects could happen here. Okay, so this starts to look a little bit more like fire, but fire is red <laughs> or yellow. So not, uh, not like that. How about So this is red, green, and blue, right? So how about we make the green component a random attribute of this flame? Uh, this is kind of a silly way to write the code, but uh, let's see. Math random multiplied by 255. That's the maximum value that we can get here 
and I don't know if it will complain if it's a floating point value or if it just converts it but yeah so now my colors are gonna be between red and yellow because when this is the maximum value 255 uh, red and green form pure yellow so I'm gonna have a wider range of orange value here values here <laughs> yeah Frank <laughs> beautiful isn't it it's somehow better but not right not really great i don't like it um i remember that uh, some of my students did a trick here so there were something called composite composite operations in this canvas they are some really really nice things here and I remember one of my students I wonder can I find out who it was from the student project page um, I think it was Antti so uh, he found this really nice looking flame there and uh, he used these um, I think it was the lighter composite operation. Let's see. Um, hmm. I hope this looks nice. I have never tried myself, but um, okay, something is weird. I think that this composite operation needs to be switched back after drawing the flames um, otherwise it will interfere with everything so so after I draw the background I need to do this and then go back to the um, default what was the default I closed the tab uh, this source over is the default it's a little better I think it's a little nicer but um, somehow I, I don't know Hmm. Am I pushing too many of them? Let's let's try with less. So now I don't put uh, flames or sparks on every frame. I add only sometimes with the probability of fifty percent. So no, this doesn't look good. It looked better before with more of them but somehow I, I don't like I think it never needs to be fully opaque I think there should always be some kind of transparency the size of this is getting smaller hmm Let's try to fix the transparency value here, 0 0.3. Okay, it's a bit better, but uh, is this thing really working? Lighter yeah hmm. yeah there's also light thin no it's kind of different I preferred the previous one more 
how about if I remove this transparency value? So you can kind of see everything is yellow. I think that because yellow is lighter in color, it overwhelms the other ones. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to leave this thing here with the transparency, but I'm not going to start at full transparency. I'm going to start at uh, 0 0.5 instead. So this is now a little bit different here. Okay, what happens if I put this green value to be zero and then I have just red? Maybe no, it was better before. Um, I think yellow is too strong. So I don't want the green value to be all the way to the max. I'm going to put the upper limit here, maybe 100. I think this is a bit better now. Mm. Yeah, somehow a little better, but I don't like it that much. I don't know. Somehow too too rough. How about adding a radio gradient? So I want my circle to have this kind of um, radial gradient from red to orange uh, hmm. What do these parameters mean? Um, X, Y, R. Okay, so so X, Y, R. I think X and Y are the same, but uh, I want a different radius here. So, um, yeah, okay. So maybe it starts off at a zero radius and has a transition to this value here. So from red to orange, but I don't want orange. I want. Um, I want red, but with full transparency. So the middle part, now let's see what I'm getting. Mm. Okay, this looks much better, I think so. So, yeah. The radius, I'm going to decrease it by more. And uh, the color, yeah, this is going to look nice. The color uh, starts off with full opacity, uh, but it's a, it's a gradient. And here, I'm going to do this trick for the green amount. So I'm still going to have um, some randomness in the colors. Okay, I, th I think I figured out what my student was doing. So I kind of like this uh, more now. This looks kind of realistic. Maybe, yeah. I think it's much better now. Hmm. Hmm. 
Wow, so many hours passed and I'm not great. next a cloud okay thanks yeah yeah thanks I think the flame looks good hmm. Hmm. next one is the cloud so I'm going to copy the fire. Cloud. Um. Okay, so my cloud is going to be static. It's not going to be any kind of moving moving thing I don't want to have a um, yeah I think I, I let the, um, the fire be for now <clears throat> So I don't want the cloud to animate, I just want to see it static there. But now my code is uh, animating everything because of that interval. So if I go back to the project here, um, On mouse over, it's going to do that. Hmm. Uh, it can animate it in place. So basically, it's going to look the same, but it's going to use processing power. I don't like it, but. Uh, but if I use randomness, it's not going to look the same. And I don't have a fixed random seeds here. So it's kind of, yeah. Okay, I guess you like cats. Hmm. I don't have cats here. But uh, maybe soon I'm gonna have bats. So wait for that. Some kind of animal at least. Yeah, I don't like it. This mouse over adding here the interval. It's fine. Okay, so let's call this cloud now, and I'm gonna still call it, um, well, cloud parts, cloud part.
yeah i'm gonna make it from some kind of um, similar to the flame and i'm gonna put many of them on top of each other but they will be static so this kind of radial gradient circles uh, this is what's gonna be my cloud part here and uh, yeah let's see what happens so i get a new cloud part um, but I want to add it with some randomness again. I want the cloud to have this kind of flat base and um, kind of a bump there in the middle. Maybe that would look interesting. So let's let's see how it will look like. Mm. A random <coughs> value here for the x-axis and I'm gonna multiply it by the canvas size and then let's just put it canvas size uh, divided by two for now but I'm gonna modify it soon enough so these are going to be my cloud parts and again this um, array here filled with these new cloud part yeah mm. in the draw frame I just loop through let's keep this for now here maybe it's interesting to have it as an effect but uh, no more new things uh, adding a dark background can stay um, cloud part at the location yeah i think the radius can be static here no speed no step no lifespan no green this is going to be simple so begin path the gradient stays but i want white white clouds so it starts off with um, some transparency maybe 0 0.5 here and zero transparency on the sides i'm hoping it to be somehow very transparent on the side of the particle and this gradient can be like that uh no update really necessary it can be empty and i don't even need to call it here so in my cloud parts i just draw them and hopefully that's enough um not enough i need to add the cloud here and here okay it doesn't look <laughs> oh yeah you will get bats it doesn't look like a cloud well maybe a little bit let's do something more here so um draw dark background let's make draw colored background and give it some kind of color attribute here I'm trying to guess a nice shade of blue uh, colored background I can add this as a where is this oh yeah uh, utility functions background and this needs color here and um, yeah something like that A 
I sure guessed something, didn't I? RGBA No hmm. Was it working with the dark? Yeah, so why isn't it working with draw colored background? Begin path, fill style equal to the color, fill rect. <laughs> the cloud parts are particles. <laughs> I, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> But this color is not working. Draw colored background. And I actually don't want transparency for this. So. Okay, I I really don't know what, what happened before. So this was 100 and 100. Not really a nice shade of blue. Um, this can be 10. This is more like how it looks like. Hey, this, this looks kind of like airplane trail. Uh, <laughs> I might reuse this. Uh, as as an airplane trail <laughs> at some point. Yeah, okay, In interesting idea. Let's see. So draw colored background. Okay, cloud shouldn't start, shouldn't have any kind of randomness here. I'm going to let it start somewhere in the middle and end somewhere in the middle. So. Yeah, let's say the x value is going to be hmm, something like this. So now what happens is that my cloud star <laughs> starts with an error. Um, missing this array thing. Yeah, it starts here. And I also want the Y. Hey, maybe I'll use the sign function again. So let me try to do some magic. Hmm. Big errors, <laughs> yeah. Um, hmm. 
nope not what I wanted really that's something what I wanted it's kind of uh, hard to explain what I did here but pretty much some kind of math uh, <laughs> math logic and uh, maybe I'm gonna do it yeah I'm gonna modify it a little bit more I'm gonna add a two here and I'm gonna do uh, canvas size by two minus this value so that this uh, shape of the cloud goes a little up and uh, here I actually wanted 0 0.5 no, um, 4 maybe yeah, so I want my cloud to kind of look like a lump again I'm using the sign function I had to normalize it a little way this code is really messy but um, but somehow it looks okay and um, when I'm regenerating it I'm getting different shapes here so of course all of them are gonna look somehow like this sign function which is not really fantastic but uh, I do get some kind of diversity to, to it every time I refresh and I think I'm happy with it Recon uh, yes, I constructed the the clouds as as particles. This kind of circles, circle looking like particles that have some kind of uh, uh, radial gradient. So it starts off pure white. Um, not pure white, uh, white that is fifty percent transparent, and then on the sides, uh, this kind of far side of the cloud it becomes uh, completely transparent and uh, of course you can play now with different parameters here you can have this kind of more sparse cloud but it doesn't really look that great you can start to see these uh, individual circles here so maybe you want to generate it with more particles here you could play a little bit more with the randomness uh, not have it look so much like a sign yeah but I'm kind of happy with it as it is now and uh, I'm gonna leave it like this okay um, hmm. moon the next project is moon yeah, let's try the moon. Uh, I hope this is gonna be easy. Moon. Um, I don't want any particles here. I'm just gonna draw it as a circle or, or something like that. Draw frame, draw colored background. Sure, let's leave this, why, why not? and uh, make the background um, hmm. let's make it dark blue somehow in my mind that's how the night sky looks like even though it's it's black but uh, in some cases it can be it can be dark blue like if it's close to the sunset or, or something like that and here yeah, I don't need any more objects I just want to draw a circle so arc and this is going to be I'll put it in the middle okay let's put a method here mm, draw moon and call it here uh, in the middle so mm, 
by the way, I disabled many of the functions that come with the with Notepad++ that auto completes the code because I think that it's really messy when you show it and everything kind of moves around. It's kind of hard to focus when you're watching things like this. So I think this might have been a bad idea, but anyway. <laughs> Location and um, yeah, let's do a, a circle uh, at this location. So uh, radius mm, a part of the canvas size so that it would rescale nicely and uh, starting it at zero and pi times two radians. So yeah. Um, begin path. And um, fill. I'm gonna put fill color, uh, fill style to be yellow. And um, I need to import this new project now, moon, and uh, add it here to the list of canvases. Okay, moon. <laughs> very, very realistic. Well, I've used Visual Studio Code a bit, but it doesn't adapt to all the languages that I use. So my students do things in all the languages and I get all kind of pieces of code and this Notepad++ just somehow I got used to it over the years. I'm not sure if Visual Studio Code can handle really any programming language, but um, I, I, it's just a matter of getting used to it and uh, because I'm not really a developer like a web developer or a Java developer or a C developer or whatever, I don't mind the lack of efficiency. So I'm, <laughs> yeah, in my case, it's, it's okay. But uh, yeah, let's um, try to use more of those global, um, composite uh, operations here. I want the moon to look kind of like a, like a moon. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. How about this destination out? Can I use this to draw another circle on top of it somehow? Let's see. So I'm drawing a circle here, right? And um, destination out, maybe. And I'm going to draw another circle. Um, hmm. A little bit offset here, let's say minus. Not this uh, coordinate, this coordinate. What do we get now? Not <laughs> not at all what I am expecting. I really don't know how these um, operators work, but uh, I think that I should here return back to source over. It seemed to do the trick before, and I don't want them to do this. Definitely not. So um, I want the. Okay, maybe I need to do this. before no 
this doesn't work. Hmm. So I kind of want to eat part of the, the moon, but uh, this maybe source out. <laughs> no, this is not the moon. Um, hmm. Yeah, maybe. Some people don't call it an IDE. <laughs> Some people call it just a text editor. Kept where it doesn't overlap the new shape. So doesn't that mean that this should work? I mean, if I don't do any of these changes, Okay, uh, no, hm. anyone has any ideas? I think that this should work. It, the content is kept where it doesn't overlap the new shape. So if I let's change here the color to this um, new one and um, what? Oh, b begin path was missing in this second one. I think let's see is this the reason okay interesting um, so the background here is being cut off basically hmm. yeah well it's gonna be like this so i'm gonna move this just a little bit and I'm going to make the background, yeah, I'm going to make the moon know what the background color is. Or just use this, this value here as the, no, I can't. Hmm. Yeah, okay, too much trouble. I just feel it like that and don't use any of these fancy things. So I'm going to fill that part with, uh, yeah, this is better. Fill that part with the same color of the background, basically. Oh, I think this looks decent. Hmm. Yeah, why not? Uh, okay, Aurora, so I want to make northern lights somehow, but uh, <laughs> this is not going to be easy, so I'm, I'm a bit worried. Let's see, I'm going to copy this moon, Aurora, and uh, yeah, the new Aurora project is here. Ah, the light in my room is changing sometimes when there is not enough movement. <clears throat> so, yeah, let's see. The draw frame. Mm. We have the colored background, but now let's call this draw Aurora. And uh, I'm going to give it uh, some kind of
shape to draw this. Uh, yeah, let's see. In this shape, I'm going to put at the moment some locations. Let's say Mm. something like um, zero so I'm gonna put the, I'm just gonna draw a line from the left to the right and in the middle of the canvas like vertically in the middle of the canvas and this one is going to be the first um, I wanted the Aurora to have some kind of nice shape but um, at the, in the beginning, I'm going to just start with the line from left to right. So here I'm going to put canvas size on the left. Now, uh, this draw Aurora function that is going to be here, I'm going to say begin path. And um, going through this shape, I'm going to start with the first point because in the beginning I'm going to say move to the first item in the shape the first point in the shape first location and now uh, line to all the other ones so I'm going to do a line to and uh, stroke now the stroke that I'm gonna do, let's make it hmm. something like this. And uh, now in the main project I still need to declare this new one, Aurora here and uh, Aurora here and when I refresh <laughs> there is just one line here which is very boring and you can't really see it yet um, well enough so let's make it very thick I'm going to say line width equals to canvas size multiplied by 0 0.2 note that I'm always using relative values to the canvas size so I'm doing that because I, I want if I will ever re uh, shape the canvases the things to look the same otherwise they will just be disproportionate all the time so this is the Aurora but it looks horrible um, I'm going to put another point somewhere in the middle hmm. yeah you know what I'm just gonna put um, another point here in the middle and I'm gonna put it somewhere on the top part of the screen so maybe like this if I refresh this now it looks like this kind of messy thing but um, hmm. no I, I don't like this so I want it to be very visible on the bottom side, but then transparent as you get to the to the top. So it becomes more and more transparent somehow. And I'm not sure if this is possible. It's not possible to do as a, as a, as a gradient if you want to keep the shape of the path here. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, I think I know what I want to do. I don't like the way that I'm doing this here. I'm going to do some uh, Bezier curves. Um, yeah. 
there are these uh, okay this has two control points I think I need only one control point maybe this yeah and uh, I'm gonna move to the first one here the first value of the shape and then I don't need this for loop anymore I'm just gonna say this context quadratic curve to and this is going to need um, the first point it will take that one um, as values I don't know if this kind of syntax works but we'll find out and uh, now I'm gonna refresh this yeah it's a little better Uh, let's start a little bit off screen so minus canvas size times 0 0.1 here and end canvas size times 1.1 so we don't see this weird effect here and our mid uh, point I'm going to every time I'm drawing the frame I'm going to say the y value of this point is going to be plus equals to hmm, math sign of step and um, yeah okay I'm going to start uh, with counting the steps like how many frames have passed and I'm going to increase this by a small value and then I'm going to modify the y position of this control point based on this and this should mean some kind of movement but I don't see anything this needs to be scaled by some proportion of the canvas size still nothing Um, not y, uh, I'm using 0 and 1 there, so that's one thing, but no, it, it doesn't do anything. So I want to move one point, the, the control point in the middle, I want to move it a little bit so that I'm going to get uh, some kind of movement of the aurora as, I, as it animates. That's the whole point that I'm trying to do here and for some reason this doesn't work so what is wrong oh um, yeah this shape needs to be part of the object and defined once so um, yeah this was problem so I was defining it drawing it and then something changed but then it defined again so I lost any kind of movement here and uh, this again here missing yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> it's a way way too much movement so I don't want that to happen I want it to move a little bit and uh, maybe I don't need to do anything here let's see um, it's moving slightly but too predictable somehow I don't like it very much mm. and too fast maybe I make this one jump like that okay 
then um, maybe I use cosine on another control point, let's say the first control point and uh, the third control point, I make an offset here of um, pi, for example. Okay, so now the movement is a little bit more organic, if that makes any sense. So thanks, Indra. <laughs> So I kind of like it, but I don't have the transparency that usually comes to this. So, of course, um, I could do and I will do here some kind of RGBA, red, um, green, let's make it full green and uh, 0 0.1 transparency. It's barely visible right now, but I want to add um, multiple values here, uh, multiple lines on top of each other, if that makes any sense. So um, here I'm going to say, I'm going to basically repeat this for Ten times, and the size of um, of my line, this line width, is going to be affected by this i variable here. So this is my maximum value right here, but I'm going to scale it by i divided by ten. So this is going to make the maximum value when i is equal to 10, uh, which will be a 1, and uh, then everything until 0, but there's no point to draw something with 0 thickness, so I'm going to start this at 1. And now let's see what happens. So nothing. Okay, I think I need to do this. A little better, <laughs> but um, still kind of kind of ugly. The first problem is that I want the bottom part of this to be the most dark because these things usually fade as you go to the top part of these lines of the of the sky. So I want the brightest part to be on the bottom, and then it to be more transparent as you go to the top. So let's see if this is difficult to do. Um, okay, the line width. So how big is the difference, basically? Mm. Something like that and um, I want to take the Y component of this one uh, and add to it the difference this difference value so I want the lines to also get lower I think as I'm drawing them let's see maybe this doesn't really make a sense now uh, but hopefully it will after I write it. So I hope I calculated correctly and not, yeah, I did something wrong. Well, it is interesting. <laughs> I don't know if sometimes it can look like that. Hmm. Let's try minus diff here. I think that I made some kind of error in, in the thought process. Yeah, this is a little better, but um, hmm. 
I should have sat down and done the math here, but okay, yeah, it's because it grows in both directions, but I need to move it just half the distance in one of one of the things. Okay, uh, Rahul, so it's 7.41 here <laughs> and I still have a long way to go. So this is what I wanted to get, but I wonder if I can blur this somehow. I remember that there are uh, some kind of blur filters. Mm, let me see. Oh, just that. So let's see if this does anything. I it looks nice in my case, but it's kind of slowing down the process. So it's not a very good idea. And uh, I remember reading somewhere that this is not supported on. Yeah, it's not supported on some browsers. So I'm not going to use this this filter. I remember just now. So basically, uh, I'm going to refresh the page uh, without this blur. And what I'm going to do instead is uh, I'm going to increase the number of these lines. I'm going to say here 100 lines. Okay. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Too much transparency here. I need to use a smaller value. Okay. Even a smaller value. Kind of too small. This is something that looks a little bit more realistic, but now I see that this bottom side is just too sharp. So I would like. <laughs> Yeah, good point. Good point. I could try to do a rainbow and I already kind of had the things there. So, hmm. okay, I do that after this, I hope. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm happy with this, but uh, let me try one quick thing. Maybe this works. I'm going to put here 0.4 and um, yeah, with 0.4, it moves the things uh, not to the bottom, but a little bit to the top. So I'm getting here some kind of uh, small gradient. Also, it's not so sharp anymore. And I think that this is pretty much OK. Yeah, so a bit hard to explain what I did here, but I just played with the math functions and I didn't care too much about uh, mm, about the realism. So it, it does look kind of um, fake compared to the other things. But it, it will be for now. Maybe I lower the transparency a bit more. OK, this is kind of nice. I, I like it. OK, let's see if I can change this to the rainbow idea that uh, Ville mentioned. So I'm going to put the rainbow. Rainbow. And uh, my shape, it's going to be static this time. So the rainbows don't change in any way. They don't really uh, <laughs> animate like that. Uh, draw rainbow. Draw rainbow. Uh, rainbows, usually when you draw them like, uh, <laughs> like if I were a kid and I would draw a rainbow, I would just draw different colors. So you have that uh, Roy G. Biv. Mm, yeah, like seven colors, I think. I think there's even some saying like seven colors of the rainbow. 
and um, yeah let's see what happens like this and for now I'm gonna put this as a stronger transparency value here just to see what I'm getting and I'm gonna update the gallery with a rainbow project and um, here as well okay so I still have my Aurora that moves there nicely and uh, the rainbow is ugly <laughs> very 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 ugly I don't want my rainbow to move by that I think the previous value is just fine uh, I mean I don't want this small blurriness here at the bottom this is nice I, I like it like that but now I have to give different colors here and um, hmm well <laughs> let's see I'm gonna write modular code and I'm gonna say get color uh, index and here I'm going to say get color of I so I is going to be my index and uh, this is gonna be a switch index and uh, case zero I'm going to say return red uh, break uh, orange yellow uh, green blue now there is indigo I think and then violet uh, I think purple is something <laughs> sorry this starts at one and uh, indigo I don't know <laughs> let's just keep it purple now and see what we got so we got an error get color is not defined I need to put uh, this here it's a method yeah um, what happens is that this one is being overwritten by this one by this one by this one and so on so I would have to start at 7 and um, I think that is going to be okay minus minus okay and my purple is dark blue I think I mean this indigo here I think this is fine so <laughs> I got a rainbow yay <laughs> thanks for the idea yeah yeah it, it is though those colors but they are in reverse uh, are they opposite direction okay Okay, something weird is happening here. I wonder what is this side effect, but I'm not gonna be worried about it. Um, I could add the blur filter here because 
no because it it still doesn't work on some browsers but so what um, I forgot how it looked like okay like that um, it could fix that problem and it could make it look nicer the thing is that with the blur here this is not animating on in any way so it doesn't look like a, a problem oh but now my rainbow here is the text is blurry also so maybe I need to make it back to zero Actually, this is still animating. I'm gonna leave it like without the blur. It's like this uh, cartoony style rainbow. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thanks, I, I changed it. <laughs> yeah, good that it is like that, so. <laughs> okay, good. Now, mm, next project. Oh my, this is lightning. But this lightning, um, I wanted to use fractal trees, but turn them upside down. So uh, maybe I do a fractal tree next. Yeah, let's make a fractal tree from this rainbow. I'm going to call it... Uh, I'm gonna call it oak. You'll see why in just a minute. But uh, yeah, so oak. Okay, now, um, since Frank is here and he is big, uh, <laughs> master of fractal trees i actually have his video here so you might want to check this out he makes these kind of really really intricate procedurally generated trees here that look more like art than than uh, some real thing but they look really special definitely so check this video on frank's laboratory channel and i'm gonna cheat <laughs> just because I can and I'm gonna go to the end here and try to figure out what he's doing and uh, <laughs> copy this function and try to explain it to you guys um, <clears throat> so he has a function here for draw tree and uh, he's using a start location a length uh, an angle and a branch width and some colors but uh, I don't think I'm gonna worry about those now and then this function is being called recursively here at the bottom so I'm just gonna try to copy this and <laughs> see if I can get it to work um, hmm. so it's something like draw tree and uh, he will call it with uh, some location uh, length uh, angle branch width and uh, of course I have to define this function and I don't need uh, this method okay it's getting dark here again uh, I have to move or else my office gets totally dark yay fractals <laughs> so um, hmm. So here in the draw tree, uh, yeah, I need to define this method and it's going to have a location, length, angle, branch, width. These are the um, parameters that he is working with. And he's saying 
Now you can see this uh, both my typing screen and Frank's video here, but I can't. I always have to switch because I'm I'm using one screen. So this is another thing that you're gonna complain about my style. I just can't use multiple screens. Um, I'm really used, very, very used that when I move my mouse to the left as much as possible, it's gonna stop there on the side of the screen. And when it doesn't, strange things happen to me. And uh, I'm slow sometimes copying things like this, but uh, yeah, let's see. So uh, begin path, he saves the con text state at the moment so he's going to do some interesting things here and I will explain them soon enough uh, and setting line width equal to branch width uh, which is the parameter then he translates rotates and moves the canvas let's see Okay, he has a uh, angle multiplied by math pi divided by 180, uh, 80, but I'm gonna use just radians everywhere. So I don't need to do this conversion. I, I will just know that this angle um, is in radians and I don't need to worry about that. Uh, and then Now, uh, hmm. okay, then he does a line to from zero to minus the length parameter and the stroke. And then he checks if it should complete. So every um, recursive function needs to have a stopping condition and when this is uh, done he restores the context returns the function but if it's not reaching the stopping condition then he recursively calls draw tree again with um, zero and minus length okay yeah because he didn't restore the canvas yet I will explain a little bit what he's doing here but um, just bear with me for a moment And then um, length multiplied by, um, by 0 0.75, then angle plus something. Now, because he uses degrees here and I use radians, I'm going to need a smaller value. 7 will be way too much. I'm just going to try plus 0 0.1 for now. So this is. A small difference and uh, branch width okay this might need some change soon but uh, so this is one recursive call and he does another recursive call and the only difference is the angle having a minus of the same value here and then he calls the restore function same as here and this hopefully gives me a tree uh, I added it there already but uh, here I need values for it so let's see what values he is using okay canvas width divided by 2 canvas height minus 80 so he's drawing it in the middle of the canvas 
horizontally. And um, at the bottom of the canvas. So let's just put here times 0 0.9. And uh, then the length of it, he uses 120 here. Angle starts with 0. And some colors there, but I don't need them yet branch width 2 okay and let's see if it works so refreshing the page uh, this draw rainbow okay um, hmm yeah Yeah, this is not great. I really don't want it to animate here. It's going to be really slow, but uh, OK, it actually works. But my um, function, the stroke style, let's make it white so it's more visible. And how does this thing work? So basically, what is happening is that um, these operations, like translate, for example, uh, if this is your canvas and this would be the top point zero zero, if you translate it to some location, it means that the canvas moves like that. And after it moves like that, um, it's zero zero value is in the middle, for example, or wherever you translate it to. Same goes also for the rotation. So if you ro rotate the canvas before you do anything, then um, your things will be drawn at an angle. And that's why here he's always drawing things from zero, zero point, which would basically be top left of the canvas. But because it always moves in these uh, translate and, and rotate, it pretty much uh, never draws in the top left corner of the canvas, but it uses as a starting point the middle part of the of the screen. So what I don't like now is that I'm really drawing this expensive fractal. So of course, if I make here this value even less then my fractal is going to be even more precise so even more lines are drawn and these are drawn at every frame because it's in in each frame of this animation and i don't want it to be so expensive it's killing my my processor especially because next projects are going to be something like draw forest so yeah all right but um okay so this is okay-ish i think as one fractal this is okay and i don't mind the extra processing but i will have to think about it a little bit uh later on he also has a way of changing the width for the branches here but uh, it wasn't in the part of the video where I stopped there. So maybe if I start with something thicker, like these uh, thicker lines, or maybe even thicker, let's say eight. And um, the length here, I could make it a bit higher number. Yeah, maybe even higher. I want it to cover more, more of the screen here. Um, then I could also say here that I want to decrease the branch width by some amount. And here I'm decreasing it by 80%. Um, at each level. So now this is thicker here in the beginning and then the leaves become thinner and this looks kind of nice. Okay, but um, so far I'm happy with it and I'm gonna let it be. And I said oak here because I'm going to also draw a spruce. 
<laughs> and I'm gonna copy the oak and call it spruce. Let's say that I'm better at uh, making landscapes um, with these kind of trees because I live in Finland and I'm more used to seeing these. So I'm going to take the spruce and um, initialize here these values. Um, yeah, this is fine. And um, my draw tree function is going to look pretty similar, but um, I need an extra branch. So how does this fractal really work? It's pretty much um, it's pretty much the code what it's doing it's drawing a line like this and then at an angle it's going to draw a line like this and a line like this and repeat so basically after drawing this you could consider this part here as the starting point so then after this one is done you get another smaller branch here and a smaller branch here and this just goes on and on and on until my stopping criteria starts uh, appears and to make it into a spruce I'm just going to add another branch straight on here and Hopefully that's going to mean that this part becomes something like like this and continues again here in the middle and this part here is going to be something like this and continue again in the middle and so on it kind of starts to have this more narrow narrow shape to it but uh, I actually tried this some days ago but I'm not sure if it's going to be as easy to do it on the fly let's see so the middle part has no change in the angle. It's the same angle here, no, no changes there. Let's just see how it looks like now. So, oh, yeah. So I made this modification while paint was still on. Basically I, copied the third time the function and uh, angle without any uh, offset here and I want to see what happens next so mm, something bad happens I think my browser is going to crash <laughs> uh, okay this was not a good idea Okay, no, this didn't work at all. So what happened here? Um, hmm. sure it didn't work or maybe it did work yeah let's try um, put a higher value here because it's killing my processor when I'm rendering and uh, I also want to see a simplified form of the tree so not so many branches But this is now, I, I don't know if this refreshes anymore or if my browser is, is dead. Let's try kill the tab. Okay, um, it's not working. So I think that some of these branches need to be a bit smaller. The ones on the side, this is probably one, one thing. 
uh, okay, not the branch thickness, but uh, this change here. Well, <laughs> um, sure, why not? <laughs> it's, a, it's a spruce. Bigger angle of the branches. Okay. Um, bigger angle. Okay, yeah, this is a little better. Yeah, I think this is fine. Maybe this value could be also... No, bad idea. <laughs> yeah, make the middle longer by giving it... Yeah, yeah, I did that. Well, you know your trees. <laughs> so, uh, I didn't make the middle longer, but I made the branches thinner. So that was the problem. It was still looking too much like this oak otherwise. I think this is fine. You can see it kind of blinking a little bit because it's regenerating on every every frame. Okay. Um, leaves. Okay, this is something that I could do. So adding leaves to these trees could be possible. Yeah, let's try to add leaves to, to this tree here and think a little bit also about optimization. So my leaves is going to draw the tree and after it draws the tree, I want to add leaves to it. So draw leaves on the tree basically so this is gonna be there but let's call it leafy spruce and uh, in the gallery here say leafy spruce and leafy spruce okay now <clears throat> I could go through the pixels like um, go through the pixels of the image where okay just a second A leafy spruce I named it wrong just a second I have to rename the file okay yeah so it looks pretty much identical but I want to add leaves to it so I'm thinking to go through the pixels of this image and where I find a pixel of a branch of a tree branch I would put there a leaf instead um, or on top of it some kind of drawing there now I need to get the data for this canvas first so there is a function it's this get image data function. <clears throat> Let's see. So on the canvas context, I'm going to get all the pixel values from the top left corner to the canvas size 
I'm putting now the parameters down here because you probably can't see. Now this image data is an array. It's a, mm, a very long array and the values in it are things like um, RGBA value of the first pixel top left corner and then RGBA of the second pixel and it's kind of a, this really really long m mess and the size of this is canvas size times canvas size multiplied by four because okay let's put here a simpler notation like canvas size to the second power multiplied by four because there is this rgba in each of these um, for each of these pixels so we have canvas size times two pixels a million pixels and Yeah, I could draw a leaf when the recursion is terminated, but um, that will um, have this cool effect that you are getting here, um, that the leaves are basically somehow surrounding the shape. And I am looking for something different because when I draw the forest later, I would like somehow leaves to be everywhere over the item, over the tree. But I could do that. Mm. Let's see how this goes. Um, I think that this function that I'm writing now will be useful al also for some other things and uh, I would like to use it for these other other components later on. But yeah, so let's see, uh, I could do a for loop for the x, for the y values. Uh, like that and and then for the x values like that and mm, get the value at this location so to get the value of this uh, the pixel values here at this location I would need to do something like um, get the index so x times y times 4 and then r is equal to image data of data of index green blue alpha and then here I have to add the plus one plus two and plus three uh, I really don't care about these other ones now the R the G and the B because this alpha is going to tell me if if something here is visible or not so all the pixels here on this uh, background uh, no actually this will not work because uh, this background is now blue color this blue color here so I need to check for white values so I'm going to look for RGB um, and I will say that if if R is equal to 255 and G is equal to 255 and B is equal to 255 
then I found a, a white pixel basically so in this case I'm over a place where I could draw a leaf that's kind of the the idea so yeah how about I How about I change the pixel values around this location every time I find a, a white location I change the pixel values um, slightly so yeah let's see if this makes any sense first I'm going to try some simple thing and change all of these um, the value here to a pure pure green and see what happens so this red component here is going to be zero then this green component here and blue component here so I want this one to be 255 yeah and then I think that there should be also function that I can um, put the image data back onto the canvas so let's see if this works I think it should be like that um, maybe it's put image data the new uh, value of the image data after I modified it like this so I'm not sure what the end result is gonna be here um, okay three arguments required but only one present let's see how this looks like basically what I'm doing now I'm trying to recolor the branches first and see what I'm getting there okay uh, hmm. is this like zero zero okay so we did something really weird um, it draw it did detect some kind of white areas and it put some green over it but not on every kind of pixel so this is a weird effect that I'm getting here um, because yeah because um, these pixels are not really pure white everywhere they are when they are getting close to the blue area there is a little bit of fuzziness happening on this canvas by by default and those values are a little bluish white if that makes any sense so the middle part of this tree is green I can actually demonstrate this better if I put here the thickness in the beginning of the tree thicker like maybe 20 so okay and something else seems to be happening here after I put a green color somewhere it might also affect the neighboring pixels so this method as it is it's not very good I think that I need to yeah you know what I'm gonna do what Frank is saying and let this for later so I keep this code here for help in some other functions but uh, I'm going to add uh, a function um, I'm going to add a leaf on the final branch of the trees for now I think that's easier and this method doesn't seem to work like I want it to work so failed I, I guess but I think this may have potential so let's see maybe we do this someday but yeah um, 
put image date uh, okay i i don't want this anymore so this code is gonna go away but i'm gonna copy it probably in some other location i need to get these pixel values later when i do more advanced stuff now uh the last leaf of this tree so when i'm returning here this is where i think frank was saying to do to draw a leaf let's try to just put an arc function so um, maybe this is the location yeah and then i want a radius let's say canvas size multiplied like 0 0.01 and um, from 0 to pi divide uh, multiplied by 2 and uh, yeah and let's fill it with some color um, okay <laughs> it kind of looks funny it's kind of like a Christmas tree with decorations But it's fine for me. I think it's it's good enough. Oh, I actually have some problem and I'm not sure how to deal with this. So it looks like in YouTube, the streams get deleted uh, if they are longer than um, longer than 12 hours so i thought that i maybe divide this into four parts uh, and start a new stream maybe after a few hours or so but i don't know how to handle this i yeah if you guys have some idea i don't know uh, i'm also recording this on my computer but then I lose the chat and then it sounds like I'm talking by myself like some idiot and I, I don't want to do that. So I, yeah, if some of you have ideas about this, let me know.
Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Oh, it was Thomas who was saying about this uh, leaf thing. It's interesting because Frank is doing that in his second video. So uh, I somehow thought that Frank was telling me how, how to do this and uh, I didn't notice. I just wanted to try something else. This is just me ripping up out uh, of Frank again. <laughs> How about if I do these kind of canvas operations, the, what were they called, these global composite operations, does it affect in some way? I really don't understand very much, very well how these work, but um, what happens if I do this, for example? Okay, something weird, but uh, how about another one? Yep, nothing. <laughs> I'm just playing around, so I should read the documentation and really figure out what is happening here, but... Uh, maybe this, maybe multiply. I somehow remember some of these effects, but uh, no. Yeah, it's weird, <laughs> but... Um, not really what I want to see. <laughs> wow. Okay, some very weird things here. Yeah, I think I should read about these someday and uh, play with them, but I played with canvas last time very very long time ago so I don't really do these things uh, it doesn't really benefit me much if I learn these things in practice Uh, this looks better, I think. Yeah, um, I could have done that, but the problem is in, in the way that this is being drawn, and you have here these uh, um, translations, rotations, uh, and always moving to zero, zero, basically I'm always uh, at zero zero location or zero and minus length so I don't know that coordinate per se because of these canvas tricks that are used here um, and that's what I was trying to do with getting pixel values like uh, find coordinates of points after the, the drawing was made but uh, I'm quite happy with this I think I'm going to stick with it. This uh, this is better than before. 
or no, it's quite similar. No, it's not doing anything. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm happy with it. It's <laughs> not the most realistic tree, but yeah. Let's try to make it uh, colored in a nicer way. So I'm going to put here a brighter blue. The background, like nice, nicer like this. And uh, the branches, um, they are not going to be white. They are going to be brown. Mm. Kind of bad contrast somehow. This is nicer. Okay. So I also wanted to do. Uh, I also wanted to do lightning, and I thought that maybe I can do lightning using the oak. <laughs> I know it sounds a little funny, but let's see. So lightning. Uh, I'm gonna copy the oak code. Lightning JS and uh, Lightning here. Now I want to start it in the top of the screen, let's say point one here, and I want it to go down so these minuses become a plus. I think. I don't know. Uh, let's see. No, uh, I forgot the oak has to become lightning. Beautiful. <laughs> it is exactly like lightning. Oh, hi Vlad. Long time no see. Hmm. This reminds me that uh, when I first started doing these things, we Vlad and I were going to these competitions and we were doing flash development back then. So I started off as a flash developer and I did it for very many years, maybe like 10 years or even more, maybe 15. Now flash is useless and I pretend to know this canvas, but I actually don't. I, I just mm, read references and uh, my JavaScript code is not the best either. I'm sure many people would complain about it. What I know is many different algorithms and some things about math and uh, I hope they come in handy today. Okay, so not looking light like lightning definitely, but uh, I will modify it a little bit. So let's say that I'm going to put a stopping criteria that is uh, going to happen sooner. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw these with a probability. Uh, 
I hope it's gonna work. I have no idea. Okay, some interesting things happening here. How about if I do the same on the other side? So I add another bit of randomness here. So basically, Yeah, my angle shouldn't always form like a tree. Uh, lightning is very going left and right and left and right, but here everything seems to follow like a curved pattern. So maybe... If I... No. Okay. Mm. I want this to be either plus or minus, uh, sometimes both. Okay, let's start easier. What happens if I keep only one branch and no randomness here? Just I want to understand this a little more. Okay, and uh, this randomness here, let's remove it for the moment. So we just get one branch like this. But um, with the randomness, like if I have this random value, but I want it to be sometimes positive, sometimes negative. So let's call it uh, um, This is now going to be between minus 0.5 and plus 5. And I'm just going to scale it by a small value. And put it here. So what will happen now? It's a little less, less bendy now. Mm -hmm. What if I don't add it to the angle? Yeah, so I don't want the angle to carry on. I can do this. Okay. So, mm, I can copy this like, like that basically. I could write a for loop, but I don't think it's needed. I think this should come with a uh, higher probability. So I'm going to put here uh, 0.8. So higher probability for this loop to be selected. And that just means that my branches are going to go down uh, more often all the way down. But this uh, maybe I can have a lower probability for this one. So that the lightning is going to branch um, less often. Now if I do this again, yeah, I think I want this angle to be more significant. So I'm going to increase this value slightly. Okay, uh, somehow I'm getting more of a lightning vibe from, from this one. It's kind of silly that this starting location is always fixed there. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to randomize this also a little bit. This type of code, you should really write it nicer. I have so many hard coded variables here and uh, it doesn't it's not clear what it's doing at all but this lightning uh, 
once it looks good, I'm not going to touch it anymore. And I think it's fine. It's not really fine. <laughs> I should at least comment it, but uh, this is a marathon <laughs> and I'm not going to spend time for that now. And uh, how about we have a random angle here as well? Does this make sense? Let's say uh, again, it could be to the left or to the right. Let's see what happens. Too strong, the effect of this angle. I have to lower it a little bit. Yeah. Maybe this was a bad idea, the moving of the starting point. Let's try just the angle to be a little different. Mm. No. Okay. I'm kind of happy with this. It, to me, it looks like lightning. Yeah, I don't know. I think I'm I'm done with that. Let's see what's next. Um, okay, I thought that I do forest related things. So maybe I try to generate multiple of these uh, spruces. Let's see. I'm going to call it forest. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll call it forest here. I will add it here in my list of projects and include the forest JavaScript file. And inside here, I'm going to need to do some kind of optimization because if I'm going to draw so many trees, it's really going to slow it down let's let's try maybe who knows maybe it's actually not that bad um, okay I prefer to write this as 0 0.5 so that I can multiply uh, better easier somehow so I'm gonna put three trees in this scene and hope for the best <laughs> Wow, <laughs> well, it's not really a forest. It's uh, three very, very neatly planted trees next to each other. Um, <clears throat> hmm. Okay, maybe um, we play with this a little more. I'm going to write the for loop. Um, I'm going to declare a variable, an attribute of this class for the tree count and uh, I will iterate and create more random looking trees that hopefully will make some kind of a bit more realistic forest here. So this tree count, let's say that our forest is going to have five trees. So what do I want to have here? Um, location. So this can start off at this value. So my y could be multiplied here by something, by a little bit, mm, and, and randomized slightly. So I could say like that. So my y value is is like this and the x value is going to be I start off at 2% from the left and I add to this 80% of the canvas size and I multiply it by uh, random again. 
So basically now it's going to generate them in the mid part of the screen so they are not uh, going outside of the screen. Now, um, what else? Let's just try it. I'm going to put the location here as the first value. And <laughs> okay, I'm getting a weird kind of movement of these trees here. So Uh, this value is very, very, very small. This needs to be also, uh, I mean, this value here, this needs to be also scaled by something. Uh, something relative to the canvas size. So now I'm getting a little bit of vertical movement also um but yeah this has to be six here uh there is a margin on the right as well so this will be 0.2 the margins and 0.6 in the middle yeah this is better um maybe if the values are higher like if the tree is on a higher position maybe i will say that Maybe I will say that it is um, <coughs> smaller, a little bit smaller. So I could control this according to the Y position of this location somehow. Let's see. Uh, I could put here Y position and then say Let's see what happens now. I'm a bit worried. <laughs> yeah, it needs to be bigger. So I'm going to multiply this a little bit. Kind of the opposite is happening, isn't it? No. Yeah, I want the ones that are in the foreground to be bigger, not, not the opposite. So what is happening here? My canvas size and my Y location. So this is the bigger of the two. Oh yeah, yeah, it is like that. Mm. But if I do it the opposite uh, way, this is not going to be good. It's going to give me negative values. Hmm. I had 200 the previous value, so maybe I decrease from that. Yeah, now I get a little bit of perspective going on. So trees in the background are a little bit smaller than the ones in the front. This is kind of what I was going for. Let's put a little bit more trees. It seems like processor is able to handle them because they don't have so many leaves. Like if you compare to this one here, uh, this is more demanding than, uh, than my forest here actually. So I'm pretty happy with, with this result. Um, but if I want them to be the same <coughs> trees all the time, one trick I could do, I'm going to try to draw these Yeah. 
I'm gonna try to draw these here. Let's see. And then in the draw frame, I don't do anything. Let's see if this works. So first I put the colored background. Yeah. It doesn't work. So I have this problem here that uh, my the methods that I made general enough using the inheritance in the beginning, they pretty much um, make it a little bit difficult for me here. So I think I'm going to try a trick and, and hope that this works. I'm going to create a temporary canvas using code similar to this and um, draw on this temporary canvas my yeah let's see if this works draw the trees on a temporary canvas so here I'm gonna say this temporary canvas uh, I'm gonna create a new one I'm going to call it uh, temporary uh, something like that I don't think it needs an ID even and I'm gonna have the same width and height I don't append it to the body so this is gonna be a canvas that is just in the memory and I'm gonna use it to draw my trees now here I'm using this context from the super class but um, I could make my function draw on some other context I should parameterize it I will parameterize it so I'm gonna put here the context where to draw it on and uh, basically I remove all of these 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 is <laughs> this is and um, yeah and here when I draw the tree I say mm -hmm. temporary context is equal to this temporary canvas um, get context 2d so when I do this now I'm gonna send the temporary context to the draw tree function and uh, this one is going to draw on that context so this temporary canvas is not visible anywhere at the moment um, and my draw frame function here um, can actually be as before with the colored background and uh, nothing at the moment so this colored background um, oops Yeah, just a second, my... Yeah, so this one has to be here, as before. Um, temp context is not defined. I'm probably lacking uh, this somewhere. Yeah, here. So this was missing and uh, draw tree is undefined, okay. Weird. 
So why is this undefined here? Hmm. Oh, um, could be that I need, yeah, I need to send here the context. So this is one reason why it doesn't work, but it might not be the only reason why it doesn't work. Please open light. Mm. How was this working before if this is the problem? Okay. Yeah. So now the drawing happens, but on a temporary canvas. So what I want to do here is basically copy the temporary canvas on the new canvas, on the, the one that should be drawn on. So then I don't regenerate the trees at every step. I just uh, copy a uh, painting that I did in the beginning. I think this should work. Um, so I had here this code before with get image data. Um, from this temporary context, I'm gonna get the data and uh, this put image data that I never used it anywhere. I will use it here so yeah and I'm gonna put it on the context that should be drawn stuff on so from the temporary context to this new context does this work no hmm okay Let's try removing these again and uh, just drawing the tree on this context here. This should work unless I broke something. Okay, something doesn't work. So my context here Yeah, I broke something. <laughs> I'm lost. So, hmm. No errors. Oh, uh, I think it's probably below the background. Yeah, okay. So this works, but why doesn't it work then if I draw it on the temporary con context here? And then I draw the background on this context. I get the image data. It could be that it's looking for this object here, this put image data. I check the documentation in a moment if this doesn't work. It's huh. No, it's not that. Hmm. Maybe this needs the size here. Mm, nope. Okay, I have to check how it works. So put image data. 
Yeah, this should work with zero, zero. And I'm getting the values. Hmm. Okay, how? <laughs> yeah, I try. It's not going great now. Hmm. So this temporary canvas, I have the temporary context, I'm drawing on it, and I think this works. This should work. Oh, temporary canvas here, the width and the height needs to be set, needs to be initialized. Um, is this it? Temporary canvas not defined. Yeah, because I declared it as an attribute of the class. Okay. Um, hmm. Okay, put image data. Um, basically negates my background from here. I think I need to draw the background with the trees on the temporary context. Um, on the temporary context first because here probably what happens now is that the trees uh, are white on white. Okay, so now pretty much uh, the forest is generated once and then it's just redrawn every time on the frame. So I can use this thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now the code is perfect. Okay, <sighs> I try to speed up a little bit now that some of the things work here. So I have some forest here, but the next project has to be dark forest. Okay, so I'm gonna copy this and make it a dark forest. Um, well, let's make this one more, more bright a little bit. <laughs> so, Yeah, and I think that I can make the trees here black, so it's somehow... No, it's not good. Mm. I think white is just fine for this first project idea. But now, dark forest. So the dark forest, I'm just going to copy the forest. And I'm gonna do something different with it. I'm going to put uh, different colors, but also some other things that I did in the past, maybe. I want to get more kind of visual appealing things here. So I have the dark forest initialized. Um, I'm gonna put the trees as perfectly black and then and, and, and yeah okay maybe I put the background to be also kind of dark let's try to put the background to be not not totally black, but something like this. And I'm curious how it looks like. Okay, so idea would be to somehow get it to look like a, like the background is a little bit lit, but then it's covered with trees in the front. So maybe I have more trees. Let's try to put here 50 trees. I hope processor doesn't die. <laughs> okay, it doesn't die because after it generates them once, I'm not using processor power anymore. So I'm also thinking about making them 
span outside this area. So the forest is weird if it just ends here. I don't want it to end uh, anywhere. I'm going to start it. Uh, it can basically start at random on the horizontal axis. So I'm going to put here this just random on the horizontal axis and now it can go outside of the area now this part here i really don't want to see it i would like it to be totally black the bottom part because when you're in a dense forest you just see the treetops but everything else is like black especially in the night so maybe I just draw a big rectangle over this bottom part and see how it looks like. Um, hmm. Okay. And um, nope, doesn't work. I think it's uh, this color probably needs to be changed to black. too high up, needs to be a bit lower. Mm. Mm. Yeah, something like that. So now you get this kind of effect on the background where the where the trees are, so it kind of looks like the sky at night, maybe. Okay. Hmm. What if I... This put image data, I would somehow like it to be more more dynamic somehow, but uh, I mean, I don't want it to replace absolutely everything. I would like it to just add on top of, of it. And I don't think that it works like that. Unless I would implement this pixel-wise operations. Hmm. Okay, maybe. Um, so the problem is that if I would like to add here something in the background, like maybe the northern lights that are moving, I can't because this put image data is going to draw the trees and the gray background on top of the northern lights. So I need a function that takes the pixel values of the trees only and puts those on top of something but not replaces everything so i'm gonna um, write the function here yeah i think i'm gonna put it as a utility fun function add to canvas um, um, <laughs> Yeah, and it will be context A and context B. So A, uh, let's say that A will go over B. 
something like this and I'm going to yeah I'm going to take here that code that I started to write previously about mm, pixel manipulation and um, with this get image data I'm going to get the image data of canvas of context A and uh, I also need to get the image data of context B and on top of context A inside this image data I need to add context B where it has where this one has values I think this might work so I'm gonna take the alpha value from here and say that if alpha is well is equal to is not equal to zero um, then Okay, so image data A here will go over B then uh, image data B is gonna be equal to image data A but only in the place where you have transparent pixels I mean non-transparent pixels so this alpha is going to uh, help us there yeah mm. okay and now um, I need to put the image data from this image data B object to context B so this would be I hope it's gonna work mm. many things here <laughs> I don't know what will happen so now the idea is um, in this temporary canvas I don't need to draw the colored background anymore I can do this now here um, on the current canvas on the main canvas so I'm drawing the colored background then I'm adding the temporary canvas that only has trees and this rectangle let's move also this rectangle here after the background let's see if it works wow some weird things are happening wow some really weird things are happening hmm but something is happening <laughs> so I think that um, Yeah, okay. Uh, I think I forgot to copy the alpha here, and this might make a difference. Wow, okay, very interesting. Yeah, 
uh, something is really strange here so I maybe don't need to copy the alpha I think that these are some side pixels where the value is a bit strange I mean the alpha value could be um, yeah between 0 and 1 hmm because of the way that pixels are generated so that the edges are more smooth okay well I have to debug so no way to escape this And if I don't put the colored, um, not the colored background, but uh, okay, um, this should be on this context. Okay, so this background here now is where it should be. Uh, but now, so the point was to take the trees that are being generated on this temporary context and copy them over this context so what is the problem oh okay interesting let me try to generate the trees um, with the thicker leaves I think I might I think I might know what happens but uh, not sure nope Am I skipping some values in the code that I'm writing here? So I go from zero to canvas size to canvas size and I take each index. So this is now x times y multiplied by four because there are four values. And the alpha is the fourth one from the third one from this index. if the value is greater then this needs to be copied so if I copy the alpha value to it was giving me some weird effects here yeah from the sides of this um, value <laughs> Yeah. 
yeah, this is weird. Okay, some weird stuff is happening. So now actually it should take all the pixels, all the pixels, any kind of alpha, and just put them here. But they are appearing as, as these black dots. Hmm, yeah, I'm lost. Oh my, I'm so... Stupid. Yeah, th this is wrong. Um, so... I need to take... Uh, to find out... Which index it is. So the first row is going to have uh, the indexes from when y is zero here and from x from zero to the canvas size. So that's basically going to mean x multiplied by four. But the second row is gonna be y is one. So y multiplied by canvas size. Um, plus x um, modulo canvas size. I think this is the case. So this means that my indexing here was wrong and hopefully this is gonna fix it now. No. Um, probably this multiplication needs to happen uh, afterwards otherwise this modulo could be I'm not sure what the order of operations is in in JavaScript okay finally <laughs> fixed it yeah okay great so, um, this fixed it, but now I have two way too thick values here. So maybe nine for the thickness. And now it looks like I want it to, but I can also add some things on the background. So I'm not sure what I would add. Maybe, maybe this. Maybe this um, Aurora could be nice if I can add it here easily. Let's see. Mm -hmm. So what would happen if in the dark forest I say Now this is not good, it's combined with this. So this would be my function that I would need to use. Mm -hmm. I could draw it on a temporary canvas.
yeah, let's see. So, yeah, let's see. Okay. Something funny is happening. It's actually kind of working. Uh huh. Um, so the Aurora is going to have its own interval. Yeah. It's gonna have its own interval. Yeah, this is kind of bad here. <clears throat> How about I try to make another canvas just for the Aurora? Another canvas for the Aurora. and draw this under Aurora canvas. And uh, also have here Aurora context for this Aurora canvas. So now, um, I don't get this effect anymore, but this canvas is transparent here. So maybe, yeah, maybe uh, if instead of drawing a colored background, I add to canvas, the Aurora context to this context. Then I draw some black and then I draw the trees. If this works, it would be quite nice. Uh, <laughs> it's something weird is happening uh, here. Hmm. Kind of something kind of works. Hmm. I'm going to try some hacks. Um, this was not a good planning and I don't know if I can fix it without a lot of revisions. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, I'm going to remove the show disabled. So it seems like the title of the Aurora is
coming and interfering with this dark forest here in the background. You can see the Aurora text. And um, yeah, it seems like I'm not doing anything here. Yeah, it's too complicated somehow. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'm gonna make all, all the hundred unless I do some kind of hacks, but uh, this some seems like very complicated structure here that I didn't plan for well. Mm. And it's affecting now. Yeah, okay. I think I might know what the problem is. Mm. If I do on this Aurora the draw frame function It animates now, so you can actually see the movement of this uh, aurora there. It's quite nice. I I like it, but uh, something is still weird here with this uh, text. I'm not sure what is happening. I think there's there might be something wrong in this code from aurora. Mm, colored background. A shape here. Yeah, this stroke style. Hmm. Um, okay, this Aurora. Uh, needs a draw frame here too. No, something is wrong. So what is happening here? This looks okay, but a lot of white things drawn on the background. So I'm not sure why is there so much white stuff on the background. Uh, let's remove this draw frame and okay some things are being added there mm. hmm Something is almost there, but not perfect. Um, hmm. Okay, maybe I need to clear the canvas first. So If I draw the colored background before the aurora, no, something is weird. It's drawing too many times this uh, thing on top. And then the text is also behaving somehow weirdly. I'm not sure what's happening. Add to canvas here this context to that one. Uh, this should be 
there. Okay, finally, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this is getting, <laughs> it starts to look a little nicer. I'm starting to combine the projects, but the code is a bit messy. I could have done better with the logic here. I need to clear the background by drawing a new background, no matter what this is going to erase uh, these kind of text things and whatever are coming there. Uh, then I draw the frame from anything I want to do before, uh, like this Aurora is in the background. And then here I use a black rectangle in this bottom part to simulate somehow a very dense forest. And then um, I add to the canvas the temporary one with all the fractal trees from there. So it looks nice. I, I like it and I think it's good. But the code could have been nicer and easier, easier to read. Let's try to do some other things like um, white forest, maybe. Let's see. So So white forest, I'm going to add it here over dark forest. Ah, and what am I going to change? Well, I'm going to make it really simple. So I'm going to say the black uh, to white and uh, the same goes here in the tree function now I kind of regret not doing the implementation according to what Frank was doing sending the color as a parameter there but it's fine so um, I don't think that this square is needed here I think that uh, I think it could be, but maybe I lower it a little bit, like um, maybe that. Um, but I don't really like this square, it's, uh, it's too squarey, <laughs> if that makes sense. I would like it to be somehow showing snow. How about I replace it with some other color? Like, um, does this have a nice effect? Yeah, maybe this can work. And what I want to do is replace this aurora with um, <coughs> with the snowfall. So so snowfall canvas. And snowfall context. So this uh, snowfall. What was the name of the class? Snowfall with capital F <coughs> is here. And um, here I don't have the Aurora anymore, so I have snowfall draw frame, uh, snowfall draw frame. Does this work? Nope. Uh, <laughs> errors. Uh, Aurora context doesn't exist, but snowfall context should be here. 
Wow, okay. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I want the snowfall to actually fall over this light gray area here. And, um, <clears throat> huh. I don't want this black background, so I'm not sure why. Why is it black? It's black because the snowfall project um, yeah, is drawing a dark background. This shouldn't have been here, I, I think. Well, uh, I can always change it, so this won't really matter much. So in the white forest, uh, I'm going to take this colored background and put it in the snowfall. Um, in this case, it's going to be bright background, and it also affects my snowfall project here, because I'm stupid and I didn't parameterize it so that I have any kind of background I want or just remove the background so that's one thing that maybe I should do um, clear background so clear background uh, and I just remove the background here so instead of this draw dark background i clear the background and i say here clear rect instead uh, what's gonna happen now is the snowfall looks white but um, but i could uh, add if I want to this snowfall project um, a style attribute to the canvas so for example mm, hmm, I don't know how to do this Okay. So now I have a blue background here on the snowfall, but I could also put it black as before, uh, like this. And if I go to the top, to my white forest, uh, this is now blue here because uh, I have the code that draws the colored background but then the snowfall has a transparent background so it's not going to replace the background there oh it's kind of yeah uh, I don't have a list but uh, I can count them now it's not going fantastic but uh, yeah one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Hmm. Yeah, but it's going somehow. <laughs> so let's see. Next one is. Um, burning forest okay yeah I think I'm gonna copy the dark forest and rename it to burning forest Uh, 
and initialize it in the main project. Yeah, so now it just looks like the dark, dark forest there. But I thought that maybe I put the fire effect somehow uh, here. So I'm gonna take the fire JS, and maybe I need to parameterize this one somehow. So let's see. The Aurora canvas is going to be now fire canvas. And um, Aurora is fire, fire. Yeah, so this like that and fire context here. So if I do this, <laughs> wow, it's kind of nice. Um, hmm. Can I parameterize this fire more? Maybe I start it in some... Yeah, so now the fire gets drawn here uh, in the middle, starts in the middle of the canvas. But how about if I give it uh, some parameters here for the locations where to draw the fire? So yeah, maybe I, I draw a path where the fire starts. So now I need to store it in an attribute. And um, this path is going to tell me where the fire particles are going to be generated somehow. Um, and maybe I'm going to loop like that and say that 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 new flame of so instead of having one location where to put the fire I'm gonna have perhaps multiple locations where to put the fire. Um, okay. If mm, no, this is not good because I can't initialize it in the uh, gallery like that. So this path is going to be equal to the middle of the canvas. And middle of the canvas. But uh, I can have the option to change this path. So at the moment it is an array that has only this one location, this middle of the canvas. But I might give it later after I initialize it, um, some other path where the fire should spread. So at the moment, wow, what happened here? Hmm. 
yeah, something weird happened here. <laughs> I don't know what this is. <laughs> it's um, a new effect. <laughs> it's a feature. Why does it go up like that? I didn't really change anything here, so I have a for loop and I'm adding to the fire a new flame at uh, this location in the path and this is canvas size yeah what the <laughs> this is really weird same kind of thing happening there too but this is so weird So is this the Moses app? It kind of looks like a fire lamp, uh, that kind of lantern that flies in the air. But uh, <laughs> I'm not going to claim it's that. <laughs> it's weird. It's just a value. Uh, I basically replaced that. And it changed something. Here it works just fine. Oh. Um, hmm. Strange stuff, strange stuff. <clears throat> this has to work. Why is it going up? And yeah, um, okay, let's also change this to. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't know. This is weird. But I'm going to try to get the effect some other way. So I, I'm stuck on this. I just can't figure it out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, hmm. the radius of this flame. Um, yeah, I'm going to put it here, part of this object. And um, when I initialize flames here, I'm going to give them also 
the radius. So um, now I basically expect this to work the same and no more flying things but uh, I want to give it a radius by force to this fire a bigger radius so this fire radius is equal to let's say 200 and when I do that <laughs> it doesn't look great okay uh, not a good idea <coughs> if I remove this background yeah uh, I need to add similar to the snowfall the clear background function otherwise it redraws uh, everything on top of each other and it's a it's a problem there mm-hmm but then in the burning forest, um, hmm. in the burn burning forest, I can draw a uh, black background. So I had there in my project, draw a dark background. And I'm gonna do that here. Of course, I can send it also black color parameter, but since I have the other one, it's it's okay. Hmm. This took, looks a little worse. I don't know why. Um, this add to canvas, it's not preserving opacity. Yeah, I remember now. So does this break now if I uh, preserve the opacity also? Does it break everything else it yeah it doesn't preserve it it actually takes the value from there ah this is so weird uh, yeah the composite operations don't work anymore ah yeah okay okay now this needs to have a dark background here um, the burning forest because not the burning forest the fire it needs to have a dark background otherwise those uh, global composite operators don't work yeah okay why doesn't this work Why doesn't this work? So this location and this location. So why does it go up? It changes. Why 
what changes it? Again, that reference problem. Yeah. Let's copy the array. So I, I'm going to, I think this is going to solve it. So here in my utility functions, I'm going to write something like copy array um, hope this will work okay huh. now it works so in the burning forest I'm gonna have to no in the fire I try again that thing with the path is equal to this and here Okay. That one. So, so far, this should work now. And yeah, it's fine. But um, in the burning forest, after I define the fire, I should set its past path. Um, to something more than just one point. So pretty much, yeah. Let's try to add a few more sources for the fire to start. Like, um, like this. And let's see if this works now. So I would expect the fire to start in two locations. And maybe I put it a little bit lower also. Yeah, this is nice. So what I'm going to do here. Yeah, thanks. I'm going to do a for loop. Uh, let's say 10 different sources and I'm gonna do here a little randomness again random horizontally and vertically I want it um, from this location plus some small value error Oh, I 
Okay. I would like them to be grouped a little more in the beginning. So, I mean, in the middle of the screen. So let's see now. Uh, Yeah, I think this is fine. I think it looks kind of kind of interesting. Okay, so burning forest also down. Mm, gloomy forest. I just thought that this is going to be with the rain somehow. Let's try the white forest. I'm going to copy the white forest. And make a gloomy forest. bigger flames <laughs> yeah well I could make the radius here a bit bigger but I don't want to <laughs> burn everything yeah it is bigger okay so in the gallery uh, gloomy forest new project here yeah so uh, the gloomy forest I don't want snowfall I want rain canvas so I'm gonna replace everywhere snowfall canvas with rain canvas and snowfall context with rain context and then here call it rain and rain same kind of draw the frame there this could be made much better code I just don't want to think about it now I think I'm getting tired and <laughs> wow okay this wasn't that bad so the trees should be black again like this kind of dark maybe dark yeah hmm. maybe black um Maybe dark gray, maybe this background could be black. Nah. Um, trees are black and dark gray ground let's see no okay and the sky yeah here we have the same problem again with the rain so the rain should be drawn with the transparent background. So here I need to use this clear background function for the rain also. Yeah, and um, now in the gloomy forest, I can make it 
this background here the same gray but maybe I'm gonna make it slightly brighter so this is yeah not good I'm gonna make it just gray mm. Okay, but uh, would it be possible to put the raindrops over? Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, maybe fog. I think the rain was better before. But uh, how about the trees if I add fog to them? So the ones in the background would be more gray. Yeah. Um, hmm. Okay, so here I need the value and this is going to be based on the location. So if the location <coughs> y value is going to be close to the canvas size It doesn't work. Is this not logging here? Oh yeah, it is logging right now when generating the tree. So these values are just very small. Maybe I don't need to log them anymore. I will just guess it, basically. Mm. Oh, yeah, this is not a good idea. Because the tree is uh, recursive, so the, the most important part would be where the tree starts. That's where the color gets decided. But here, it's getting decided every time. every time uh, the new branches are being added so the branches that are more to the top become more gray 
Hmm. Okay, uh, I think it's easy to fix. I just moved this before I called the draw tree function here, and I say that the value is based on this location instead. And then I need to send the maybe stroke style here. Yeah, why not? And then it will draw the tree with this stroke style, uh, hopefully. Nope, it's gonna give me some errors. Um, this context here. Okay, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. I probably should have a lower value here to see the difference. Hmm. So the location of one is going to be canvas size 0 0.9 plus this one. Hmm. What? Okay, I do get some values here. Where is this coming from? Range JS, I have to remove it. It's making debugging impossible when I have so many projects processing at the same time. Okay, these values are just uh, too small and uh, they are not noticed there. So Wow. Um, yeah, I'm hmm. I'm writing the tree on the temporary context. Yeah, such a messy code. Don't program like this. Uh, now the trees on the background are grayer, but sometimes they are drawn on top of the trees in the front. Yeah, so the problem is that I should draw the trees that are smaller before I draw the trees that are bigger. So some kind of sorting there. Hmm. Okay, something is very wrong here. <laughs> wow.
somehow this is kind of doing what I want. Yeah, okay. I think this is, yeah, I didn't sort, but I started them in that order from the top to the bottom. So kind of like sorting, but uh, not exactly. Seems okay-ish. Mm. Okay, but this rain is somehow I don't like it very much. Why is it so white? Okay, now it's better. It's definitely gloomy. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Time for something else. Okay, maybe I do some sound, like some generative sound next. But I'm not sure what to do about this stream. So if I don't stop the stream now and maybe start it again after some time, YouTube will basically delete this video. And I mean, it deletes it uh, if it's longer than 12 hours and it will be in the end. So. I'm thinking if it's possible to stop it now and then create another stream for part two. Would that make sense? What do you think? It's not the only option. I could also, um, I'm recording it on my computer and I could upload it later as a full video. I think that YouTube doesn't have a restriction on the number of hours, but the stream will disappear. So then it will look like I'm talking to myself because the chat is not there. I don't think it's a big deal, but um, I'm not sure what you guys think. Do you what what should I do? I don't care. I I don't care even if I lose the stream. It's uh I just do it for fun, no other reason.
Okay. I think I go on and maybe one of you decides what they, they think I should do. But um, yeah, so I'm going to start a new project. I'm going to copy maybe this fire. It's not going to have anything to do with fire. This is going to be sound. So procedurally generated sound, basically. And I'm going to add it to gallery. Well, <clears throat> I could still upload it as the uh, a complete video later. And it's going to be in one shot, basically. Uh, so <laughs> marathon still happened. And I don't really care much if people don't believe it, <laughs> if I lose it somehow. So I don't, I don't know. Would you like it to be there I, later? I guess maybe, but uh, I will put the code somewhere afterwards. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Okay. So to generate sound. I don't really want to draw anything here. Uh, the draw frame is going to be pretty much maybe draw dark background. Let's see what happens. And I don't need such objects here. But I do want to start a sound somehow, maybe on a click. Like here, we have this click. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's say this uh, me click at this location. And this click has to be a function here, a method. Now this is an empty method here, but for sound, I'm going to have it Let's make it a utility function. Play sound uh, somewhere here. So to play sound, you need to use this uh, audio context object, this web audio API. Yeah, the last few hours. Well, if I stop the stream now and if I make a new stream in like 10 minutes, I would just need to give you the link somehow. And then hopefully it doesn't get destroyed. But uh, I'm not sure how to give you the link.
I tested yesterday and uh, I just streamed like nothing. <laughs> Uh, empty video and it did get destroyed. I streamed for 20 hours privately, so I guess it is true <laughs> Yeah, so this sound uh, I want the audio context to be part to be a global variable here in the gallery because I don't want each um, project to reinitialize the audio context and I also don't want it to um, yeah to initialize camera when I'm working with uh, camera afterwards so I think it's something like that and you need to I think that you need to do this kind of uh, for compatibility. I think it was also part of the window. Mm. I'm really not sure how this works, but uh, something like that. And I'm going to put also a placeholder here for video which I'm gonna work with later but since I'm doing these things now like um, I might as well write some functions for both of them these two objects are gonna be useful let's see so this audio context should get initialized the video is more difficult to initialize. I, I need to write a more sophisticated function for it. Mm. Yeah, let's take care of the video later. And now I just try to play some sound using this global variable here, but I use it in this play sound function here. So I need to create an, uh, an oscillator. Sounds are pretty much just mathematical functions, usually some kind of sine waves, things like that. And I'm going to try to make a, a simple frequency to see if we can, we can hear it. So I'm going to have to connect this to the destination of this audio context. It's hard for me to explain how exactly this web audio API works. You basically connect different modules to each other and the destination is the final final output. And I can set the frequency here. So, so a frequency, uh, let's say it's 500 and see how that sounds like. And the type of this wave, uh, it can be a sine wave. You can modify these and it will sound a little differently. There are others like triangle, square, sawtooth. And um, I'm going to start this uh, now at the current time. So and uh, it will play for some kind of duration. I need to specify duration and I think that this is um, seconds. I'm not sure. I have to see. Let's try like that. And then it's a good idea to also destroy this object. And I usually used a timeout and it worked out. Um, because otherwise you will still hear some kind of sounds on the background, very dim at the end and it's not nice. So yeah. Um, this one also is important to stop it after a duration, but uh, 
this works with milliseconds so i think i have the set timeout function works with milliseconds here so i think i need to do that and then i i think i disconnect uh, this oscillator and probably that's it but yeah let's see what happens um, okay uh, this video needs to be initialized to something I will do it later okay so nothing here error when I click audio context is not defined okay well I do have it here hmm. so what's wrong I have the audio context it is a global variable webkit audio context webkit audio context let's try this somehow i remember that it should be done in that way yeah this window oh yeah this is this should work this should be fine so what's wrong here let's try to copy this in the browser in the console okay so Oh, um, let's try this. I'm gonna put a let here and um, initialize it inside the main function. It could complain because of that. Create oscillator is not a function. Okay, but does this object work now? Hmm. <coughs> uh, typo. Okay, uh, I'm hearing something, uh, but yeah it's uh, <laughs> very loud <laughs> so that's pretty much generated sound um, I think I'm gonna leave it here and um, <clears throat> leave it as such but maybe I want to write something on the screen so that people know that they can click to hear it yeah
okay I'm surprised this worked like so easily um, this click to play yeah I'm gonna put it a bit higher up so it doesn't overlap this other one Yeah, let's see. I don't know if it's gonna be a success or not, but uh, it's going somehow. Thanks. Um, yeah, so uh, I have a sound here. But uh, this sound is not fantastic. It's uh, starting off pretty rough. And um, I would like it to to start with the low amplitude and then gain amplitude and then soften by the end so I would like a little more softer sound and maybe I would like to make it um, sound kind of like a piano piano note so next project is this I'm going to try to make a musical note that's how it's called I'm just going to call it mm, musical note this is fine and this one um, yeah this one needs to use something called an envelope uh, it's an object that allows me to modify properties like this uh, gain, uh, like the amplitude. So I don't remember how this works exactly, but uh, I will try to find. Mm. Okay, too much code. Yeah, it's this gain, basically. I will try this. So um, <clears throat> this gain, <clears throat> this gain node. Um, I'm going to connect the oscillator to this gain node, and then connect the gain node to the. Um, to the destination so this gain now I'm going to just have to modify its gain value somehow just a second I don't know if this example is good enough yeah this Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that I started with um, gain equal to zero and then I need to use a function like this. So this is kind of like a interval but it's specifically made for sound so it's more going to be more precise um, for working with sounds and I'm going to say that I want the gain to go 
to maximum value um, at the let's say that I want it to go there so it's gonna go from 0 to 1 which is uh, maximum value the loudest it can get so from no sound to maximum sound uh, through the duration of this process so let's see if this um, works and if it's softer this time doesn't work so Um, this is a mistake here. This should be audio context. Wasn't I getting some errors? Okay, gloomy forest. I really need to... remove these logs that I don't need anymore. And fire. No, still doesn't work. Hmm. <clears throat> Oscillator connects to the gain node. The gain node connects to the destination. But the gain of the gain node has to go from 0 to 1. If I don't do this, Okay, something is not wrong, it's not right. I think that um, I need to set value at time. Um, maybe this doesn't work to just put it to be zero there. Nope. Um, I think that this is something easy, but I just don't notice it. So the gain node should be zero. If it's zero like this, um, there should be no sound at all. You know what, I think I don't care about the stream getting destroyed. I just upload it later again and uh, stream the whole night. So, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, thanks, Radu. I, it's not going really as planned, but uh, it's going somehow. <laughs> um, at least I, I did some apps. Now, mm, what is the problem here? So this gain node is connected to destination. This should work. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure when I do this again. If I don't connect the gain node to the this, ah, this function is the same, and it's not part of the <laughs> of the class. It should be play note if I want to have them as outsider functions like this available everywhere. I think this is the thing. Yeah, so no sound is coming now, which is a good thing. I'm gonna ramp up the value to one during the duration and hopefully... So you can hear that the sound is getting from zero volume to maximum volume at the end but if i want it to sound like some kind of note i actually wanted to get to the maximum value really quickly so let's say 0 0.1 so this is better than before there's no click at the beginning even though Mm, if you will check these two different sounds, the beginning part sounds a little nicer. So after this, I also need to ram ramp it back down to zero. And uh, sometimes this behaves badly if you don't give it floating point values. Um, and here I can give it for the whole duration maybe. So now it's gonna go It's gonna go up uh, and then it's gonna go down but it's gonna go in a linear way so it steadily increases and steadily decreases it's not really something that I would like to have here and you can read about some things like this attack decay sustain release uh, envelope and this is what I'm trying to mimic here so I want it to go to maximum, but then lower, uh, come back down very quickly afterwards, maybe two here, 
and I'm gonna put it back to 0 0.5 uh, this is a little better but uh, maybe this when I'm going down I don't want it to be linear I want it to go down sharper somehow this will make it sound a little bit like a piano I think I remember it used to be like this when I tried it some time ago so exponential here I think it's a existing function it sounds a little more musical and if you change the type of the initial curve that you're playing with like a, this triangle curve it's gonna be even a bit more sharp so now it sounds a little bit like uh, a little bit more like a piano this was <laughs> something what I wanted to do so mm, edited a little bit what the titles are saying here it's clear difference so this sounds like some kind of phone dial tone that there used to be long long time ago and this is more like uh, has a more musical feel to it so now the question is um, could we parameterize this somehow because this frequency will affect the note that we are playing so if I'm gonna put here let's say 700 okay I will leave the sound to 500 uh, but the musical note I'm gonna put it 700 here four hundred okay something is wrong it didn't change at all uh, there might be a value attribute here let's see yeah uh, I should put this also in the sound so it seems like I haven't changed anything I just uh, used the default value I didn't know how to do this here so the 400 sounds like that 700 sounds like this so these are pretty much different notes and now the question is could I make uh, some kind of mm, piano using these these different notes so the next project is going to be a piano Now this piano, uh, well, I need to link it here. This is not easy to do because piano is kind of like buttons and uh, there are no buttons in this canvas. I would need to implement the buttons myself pretty much so I'm gonna have here a to do implement piano and um, so far it's just playing this one note and I'm gonna move to next project which is gonna be uh, buttons and then come back to this one yeah buttons extends project I'm gonna add it here and uh, here now here in the buttons uh, pretty much
I need to find a way to, to generate buttons. So basically the click handler needs to tell me if I'm inside the button or not. So uh, first of all, I need to make a new new button. But this doesn't exist. So this is a class that I need to create right now. So this is the limitation of this canvas object. You don't have any support. So the button. <clears throat> um, I will need to put it at the location. So <clears throat> let's give it in the let's add it in the center of the canvas. Yeah. Okay, and um, yeah, so here location. And I'm just gonna make simple square square buttons or or something like that. I don't want to make too complicated, or do I? Maybe it will be nice if later I use this kind of button for more advanced hit detection. So I could create a sophisticated way of detecting the, the button clicks. Yeah, let's try this out. <clears throat> so this button is going to go at a location and um, on a given canvas. So because I want to use this later uh, in other projects as well. Um, let's just pass the context value here. So the context is going to be there. And what my button is going to have is um, Uh, this constructor, sorry, this needs to be in the constructor. <coughs> okay, and um, draw, I need to be able to display it somehow. And I'm going to put here context dot, um, well, I actually want it to have any given shape, this kind of fancy, <laughs> fancy, weird button. Button. So how about um, I have a function here, generate polygon. So this generate polygon, it's going to give me an uh, array of points and I'm going to just yeah, generate it. So it's going to have a starting location. And um, yeah, I'm going to generate it like a kind of a, a regular polygon. So it could be triangle, it could be square, it could be pentagon, hexagon, and, and so on, depending on some kind of properties there. But uh, it's going to output just an array of points with a given shape. So that's my goal here. And I'm just going to put these points here. So so the first location is going to be I'm going to use the sine and cosine to get the horizontal vertical axes, mm, vertical horizontal axes. So here, OK, 
Okay, wait. Polygon has some sides, and here I have to loop through the sides. and update an angle. So my angle starts at zero and the um, cosine of this angle um, multiplied by some radius. So how big is the button going to be? And sine of this angle multiplied by this radius. So what this does is pretty much generates me some very weird looking buttons which I can make them to be square, for example, but uh, they can be anything and they might be useful later on, let's see. So angle is like that. Mm -hmm. I have to divide this by pi times two, because that's the maximum angle when I'm back in the starting position at zero. I think this is going to do the trick. And return array. Now, when I draw it, I have to say the polygon here is generate polygon at the location and let's say we have a fixed number of sides, maybe four, and the uh, radius, let's put it 100 for testing now. And when I draw it, I take the context from here. So the context needs to be part of the um, uh, button, one of the attributes of the bot button. And here, um, move to the polygon, the first point of the polygon. And then I iterate through all the other points. and uh, draw a line to. And this here, I started up, up with uh, the begin path. I forgot that. And uh, I fill it. All right. So a lot of work for what I I'm not sure yet. Um, on each frame, I'm going to draw a dark background and um, my button <laughs> uh, I draw it as well. So the button is initialized here, it notes the context where it should be and it's going to be drawn. Okay. Why do I get sound? Okay, <laughs> click is play note. I don't need a click a function here yet. At least I don't want it to play the note. That's definitely the case. So I don't see anything here, but I think the button is just hopefully black on black. So um, wow, something very weird here. Did I make a mistake here? So I'm going from zero to the number of sides and my angle is increasing always with
Yeah, I think I made a mistake. I think it's probably the other way around. I'm not sure. So the button should start at middle of the canvas. Uh, yeah, I'm not translating this in any way. So I need uh, X and Y components of this location to be there. OK, now it's there. It has four sides and it's some weird, weirdly shaped button. Uh, but I can add another one as well. Or uh, let's just play with, with this one a little bit. So does it work with five sides? Yeah, okay, so it seems to draw it with the five sides and three sides. And if you put here a very high value like 20 then this will look pretty much like a circle maybe a little bit rough around the edges but yeah uh, let's just have this as some kind of starting point and now I want to detect click um, click events that I have clicked this button no matter what shape it is so for that I'm actually going to define here for this button um, a random color that I'm going to draw it with. Uh, and and then uh, each button is going to have their own color. And when I'm clicking, I'm going to get the color value that I have of the pixel that I clicked on. And uh, I'm going to map these color values to the button objects and their event listeners somehow. So this is useful because if I want to implement some kind of uh, game, maybe where I want to click on a specific character and that character has some weird path, weird shape, then this is going to work. So I'm making this button much more complicated than it needs to be because I plan to use it later for something bigger and hopefully <laughs> it's gonna help i i don't know or at least parts of these functions are going to help so get random color um yeah i need to return rgb of R G B And I need for each of these to have values between 0 and 255. Uh, and they will be random values here. So I'm returning here the random color for this. And I could use it to choose the fill style here. So now when I'm drawing this, it's now it's green, but now it's purple. So yeah, it's basically giving me uh, um, a button with one different different color each each time. So if I'm gonna make another button here, let's say at this location, um, okay, let's make a button array and say. I'm going to push a new button and uh, 
yeah, like that. And another button here for testing at seven and, and seven. So now I should get an error <laughs> uh, because uh, this doesn't exist anymore. So I need to loop and draw each of them. So now I don't get the error and I have two different colored buttons. So now the question is when I click on something, which button did I click on? That's gonna be the, the next thing. So I already had here some functions um, that used this get image data function. So what I'm gonna do is when I click, I'm gonna get image data of this context uh, at the location where I clicked. So at location zero and at location one. And I'm just gonna get one pixel uh, value here. And uh, I'm going to log it to see what value I'm getting in this uh, here. So if I click here in the empty space, I'm getting 0, 0, 0, 0025. So basically it's this black background. If I'm clicking here, I'm getting the same color everywhere. So I'm clicking this uh, green object and these are the color values and if I click on this one they are different so this is how I will tell which shape I clicked on based on the colors I'm actually gonna save uh, show these colorful buttons um, on another separate canvas later so that I could draw the same looking buttons all the time but then the hit detection will happen on the secondary canvas so that um, it's, not, it, it's not apparent to the users how these buttons work, but it, they will work in the background somehow. So this way of, of implementing the buttons is somehow tedious and not, not really obvious, but it will let me click on any kind of shapes and detect the shape uh, properly. Mm. Of course, there are a limited number of colors, but there are so many of them that I don't even bother um, making sure that they are not the same. It, there is a possibility that these random values are going to be all the same and two buttons will share the same values, but it's like millions of them so very unlikely for it to happen and i'm not gonna have millions of objects it will be like 10 20 most so probabilities just say very unlikely for this to work poorly not impossible but i don't spend time for that now yeah okay so um i'm now getting that but how do i know which button I pressed and maybe I should say to these buttons uh, maybe I should give them some actions already so I'm gonna say to this button here um, function hmm. no Yeah, let's just do this. JavaScript is nice enough. So, okay, my light is turning off.
so this button um, let's give it a, a, a new attribute here frequency just this to make it shorter is equal to 400 so I want this button to play some kind of sound and I want this button to play a different kind of sound when I press it so uh, now when I do the click here I need to detect um, which button and uh, play the note uh, with, fr with the frequency that it has associated with it. So the frequency is going to be one of these attributes here called that. It's not a nice way to write code, but I will do this now for quickness. So I need to know um, have a quick way of finding out which button I pressed based on its color. So for that I'm gonna have here a color map uh, basically uh, empty I think it can be an array and here I'm gonna say I don't know if this will work let's see color map of um, the last button that I added okay this is nasty code here so um, of the color map of his color is going to be equal to the button itself. So a hash map, if this hash map works, if not, I have to figure out something. Then this one is going to give me a quick access based on the color that I pressed to the respective button. Let's see if it works and uh, same goes here so this is going to be a for loop soon enough now when i do this i'm not going to log here the data which is this uh, value here but um, get color from image data data and this is going to be data of zero data of one and data of two so now I'm Yeah. I'm getting the color and let's just try to log it first to see if it works. So I'm getting now RGB value, not anymore that array. Yeah, seems to work. How about if I'm going to say this color map of the color. So the color map of the color, it should be the button itself if this hashing system works here. If not, it's back to the drawing board. I think it works. I'm getting frequency 400 when I click on this one and frequency 700 when I click on this one. 
So now what I have to do is um, go here where I said musical note and add the frequency um, as a parameter here, not this hard-coded variable value. Um, and here, play the note. I'm going to initialize it with the same value as before. But now in the buttons, I'm going to say play note with this uh, buttons. frequency so yeah so <laughs> very tedious way of doing it but I can have them be any shapes I want really like uh, for example if I make some kind of uh, another function here like a randomized polygon and here the radius I multiply it by um, a random value and I just replace here the function of generating polygon with this randomized polygon then I'm gonna get some weirder shapes like this and if I refresh even weird weird shapes like this so now it still works and uh, okay here it gives me an error because there is no undefined uh, there is no value for this color there so I need to say if the button um, doesn't exist uh, exists yeah so here nothing but here I'm getting the sound now so of course <laughs> I could make now some kind of uh, a for loop here so this is kind of silly and I'm going to search the internet for frequencies for the musical notes. So hmm. I don't want so many of them, so I would just like the basic ones, these uh, okay. So these frequencies here, I'm just going to include them as an array and say yeah like that and here I'm gonna do a for loop and uh, copy this basically inside the for loop 
So I'm gonna make a new button. I'm gonna put it somewhere. Uh, I'm gonna add its frequency to be equal to the value of this frequency and I'm gonna update the color map and I don't need this anymore uh, but here let's start with I I mean horizontally I want to start somehow based on the I value so that from the left to the right something like that now the buttons Hmm. I um, divided by this so this is now gonna give me a value between 0 and 1 well, let's see what happens if I refresh the page okay some weird uh, buttons here um, I'm going to generate now buttons using the previous polygon because this is way too confusing for me. Okay, and um, probably This is needed. Okay. So this is kind of like a piano, but the really weird, weird looking piano. Um, yeah, I'm gonna. modify these uh, a little bit more I don't like that I have here the poly function inside hmm Yeah, let's see. Maybe it's fine for now. I just don't want them to start off screen and end off screen, so I'm going to add here a little bit of padding. It's kind of like interesting looking <laughs> piano keys here. I want the button to have a given shape at this location, but I want it to have the shape as well. So a normalized shape and then a size. So let's try like this shape and size and this okay hmm. this generate polygon yeah thanks kind of funny this might be interesting to uh, Abigail because of the sound generation but yeah this poly needs to be here and I'm gonna take the attribute store it in the 
I mean, take the parameter, store it in the attribute, and also the size. Let's put the size here too. Now, you know what? Let's not use the size. Let's just send the polygon there. So here, when I'm creating the button, I want um, the polygon outside the button constructor so I can tell the button how it should look like. And now this poly um, can go... I think this location is not needed anymore. Uh, because the poly is going to include the location as well. So I'm going to replace the location with the polygon and that's it. But I still need um, a location value here, which was the center point. So basically this value that I calculated previously, this is the center point where the polygon is going to be generated and then the polygon is going to be sent to the new button uh, as the first parameter and then the context. Yeah, let's see if this works. Okay, this is fine. Um, and if, for example, I want to now change the shapes, I could put here a value like this. Many hard-coded things here. Never program like me. <laughs> uh, and I'm rounding it so that I get a integer value. And now <laughs> these look kind of silly. But uh, now I can do this, so give different kind of shapes to these to these buttons if I want. So that's the whole purpose, because maybe later I want to have this functionality to have any kind of shape I want to the um, to this buttons that I'm generating. Now I could also say generate square for example <laughs> okay good night <laughs> or anything i can make any kind of shape i want here given a location it's gonna be just just fine so yeah a bit much trouble for this but hopefully it's gonna pay out later let's see at the moment i'm gonna leave it with four sides and uh, the size here I'm gonna put a fraction of the of the canvas size so I'm gonna make them a bit uh, smaller and I'm gonna move them a bit more down like this okay maybe too much and I'm gonna write some text there on the top so that uh, people know how to interact with this code basically so um, hmm. <laughs> it's a piano <laughs> it's not obvious what it is but <laughs> yeah so now it says it's a piano and I think people can figure out that it is a piano if they try to click on the things. So yeah, this is one thing. Um, of course, I could also generate music using this. So let's make a very simple song. Uh, yeah. Uh, actually, Damn, this was the buttons project, so...
I made the piano project inside the buttons project. Um, okay. And I also said that I want to use the same colors somehow. So, um, yeah, mm. I will have this temporary canvas trick here. So on this temporary canvas that I'm generating here, I'm going to put the buttons um, so the yeah okay I'm gonna work on this a little bit more just to get it done as I like it to be so the buttons I want this coloring trick to work even if everything has the same color uh, I don't want necessarily my buttons to be so colorful later on. No, because I'm going to get banned if I put that song on. <laughs> Bringing back memories from the Yoensu night run. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Okay, so um, this temporary context has to be also stored somewhere in the button as an attribute. And um, when I draw the button, it should be actually drawn on both sides, on both canvases. First on the temporary canvas and then on the normal canvas. Uh, order doesn't matter. Uh, what does matter is that the color on the temporary canvas is the randomly assigned one. And then here I can have any color I, I want, like a default button color, say white. Now, what is important is that when I do this mapping here, I'm going to get the color from the temporary canvas, which I which I don't see anywhere, but it exists in memory. So when I'm doing this, now all the buttons look white, but somehow, even though they look the same and the thing is based on the color, uh, I'm still playing different notes because the buttons don't look the same on the secondary temporary canvas. So this is somehow what I wanted to, to achieve with the buttons. Um, but now part of this code, um, I would like to encapsulate somehow. So how should I do this? I don't necessarily want to copy this thing every every time I want to. Well, maybe it's not that bad. Hmm. Let's see. I'm going to copy this now inside my piano code. And I don't need all this button class. It's already there in the other file. Um, this is now piano. And um, They look the same, but uh, in the buttons project, I want just to uh, alert somehow what I pressed. So um, let's maybe give our buttons also a name. I think that would be nice, a name. And um, the name comes like this. 
and when I'm drawing it on this with this white background here I'm also going to put some text there with the name on top of it so I'm gonna use some kind of font uh, let's have it black yeah this is fine but here I need to put the name uh, canvas with no this has to be damn it I don't have the location anymore uh, I could use the average of all the points here so I'm going to get the location like that and I'm going to say here location of 0, location of 1 and I need an averaging function so I have to write it somewhere uh, I'll put it in the project here as a utility so average uh, of an array and Of an array of vectors basically so my result is gonna be a vector um, hmm. I go through all the elements in this and um, Well, um, I go through the dimension of the first element in this array and I say that I initialize it with zero first, then I go through all elements of the array of vectors and I again go through all dimensions and I say here that vector of i um, I add to it Um, yeah I think it's like this and at the end I need to well now I can use the vectors length so now I'm going through the dimensions and for each dimension I need to divide it by uh, how many items were in this array to begin with. Uh, I'm not doing this because it's easy, I'm doing it because I'm going to need this function later. So <laughs> um, I could have stored the location there as well, but now I'm getting the average of the points to get the center of mass of the button where I want to put the label. So a very confusing thing here maybe. Uh, but it should work I think okay uh, it's probably writing there undefined because my buttons here don't have any name so I'm gonna give it a name okay my light turns off it's a sign that I need to move a little bit mm. 
Now, hmm. I need to give it a name. Yeah, so let's call it B concatenate I plus one so that I don't start at zero. Hmm. <clears throat> what? Oh, um, okay, but uh, the font size maybe it's too big. What? <laughs> uh, oh, I changed what I shouldn't have. <coughs> okay, so <coughs> in this buttons project, I'm going to say <coughs> This fill text here should be um, a value here. Press the buttons. But um, when I press a specific button, it's not going to play notes. This is the piano thing. It's going to change the text equals to um, button name so no music <coughs> here does this work okay button name was pressed. So now I have a ba button handler that I'm kind of happy with. Uh, I detect this and um, detect the clicks and I give some kind of status here and the piano um, well in the piano I can add for the buttons um, notes. I mean the names of the notes. So this can be Do, Re, Mi, <coughs> Fa, Sol, La, C and Do. So no names. And I'm gonna give here the node name as the final attribute, as the final parameter. And um, when I refresh this, okay, this is not defined. bigger buttons ugly <clears throat> I'm gonna change a little bit the y-axis here plus um, 
Hmm. I modulo too. So this is gonna, yeah. Multiplied by canvas size times 0 0.1. Isn't this nice? Okay, I kind of like it like that. So I think that I made many things here, but kind of a, a long time for something that is really simple. But now I have buttons and I can make them any shape or color I want. Um, almost. <laughs> I will still need to modify some things here if I want the color to be a parameter. Um, yeah, I do have this color, but this is for the temporary context to figure out which button I pressed. Yeah, so let's try to play now a simple song. Uh, I'm going to make a new project. I'm going to call it Song. Um, and I'm going to define here it and in the song um, hmm. I'm just gonna let's try to use the buttons again so I'm gonna have a simple button no need for these frequencies maybe or maybe they are important maybe the frequencies are important uh, i just want to create a new one single button here at the location middle of the canvas And um, yeah, that's about it. Then adding it here with the name play. I don't need the frequency for this button. This is going to be just a single simple button here in this page. Um, in the draw frame, I don't need any text telling me it's a piano. I will just draw my one button and here um, I'm gonna play a song now uh, that's gonna be my function that I'm gonna press uh, that I'm gonna call when I press the big button in the center of the screen. It doesn't do anything because, well, it's not implemented this, this function yet, but I will make it play some notes uh, from these frequencies. Um, hmm play note and uh, yeah let's make this arpeggio or however it's called so that is do me you can really make any song here if you know the notes uh, of course, these frequencies are limited to these very simple ones, but if you're going to search the internet for uh, all the notes, like uh, if you consider how a piano has its... Um, let's try... 
uh, piano has much more keys so you could take from here all of these different frequencies and you can make even more complicated songs with them but I'm gonna use just these basic notes here and make this simple arpeggio so it's like a zero one two zero two zero two four seven um, I need to know what are the the frequencies here because this is not the function part of the class I want to maybe use it later as well so frequency of um, zero to <coughs> four seven but uh, I want to delay them somehow so this note uh, play note function that I have here uh, maybe I can put here a delay and uh, I say that I want this to start not at the current time but at the current time plus a delay then I add this also to the duration here um, this is fine no it's not I need to incorporate the delay everywhere uh, and this timeout is going to stop yeah also needs to consider the delay here so I'm going to start the first note at delay zero and then the second note is going to be after one second after two seconds and after three seconds let's see what happens so place the note one after the other but I think that it's too um, too slow and boring and I don't want to fall asleep so I'm not gonna wait one second here I'm just gonna wait half a second and when I do this I'm going to it's more fun <laughs> and of course I could maybe go backwards as well so yeah I like to I mean if I would have time arrange these so they are nicer to read here so okay this is my song kind of a boring song but uh, that's what it is and uh, yeah maybe I move the button a little bit below and uh, so that it doesn't overlap this text yeah okay so I have some songs I want some kind of uh, sound effects here so um, I want to have some laser sound some engine noise okay let's try the laser sound I'm gonna start with a simple note musical note and I'm gonna say laser sound laser sound laser sound 
uh, not enough. Now, what is a laser <laughs> sound? Well, I don't know really because laser is a beam of light. But I'm thinking that maybe I have some kind of game where I need this kind of thing. Okay. Okay, so I could get more notes if I multiply. It could be. I could try that. It's also possible that I get some, uh, if I don't do it correctly, that I get some unharmonic notes when I put them together. <laughs> that they would sound bad. I never studied music, so I don't know if it's so easy that I can just multiply it. But I could try. Yeah. I think I can try. Uh, after this laser sound, I try to add more notes and see if they sound good. OK. Uh, laser sound, play laser i think this is enough name good name and uh, this is not gonna have a delay or a frequency it will know what to do i'm gonna put the frequency let's say 400 and i think i'm gonna leave it as a sine wave there and i'm gonna do I won't touch these, but I will add uh, a change in frequency in time. So if I change the frequency from this 400 to, let's say, 800. Um, OK, this delay is not necessary anywhere here. Yeah, uh, then now the song is going, the sound is going to change pitch basically as I'm, as it's playing. So let's see, uh, click for laser sound. I don't have a button, but uh, nah, I don't like it. <laughs> maybe reverse uh, starts high and goes down low okay <laughs> this is a bit more like it but this duration uh, maybe it's too long 0 0.5 so this kind of like uh, shooting noise if you have some kind of high-tech gun or, or whatever this is what the point of this laser sound is okay i'm pretty happy with that even though it's kind of lame <laughs> maybe like going lower it was better before starting high Maybe a bit longer duration here. Okay, yeah, this is pretty good. Okay, now let's try another project. I'm gonna copy the piano and I'm gonna make an extended piano. <laughs> uh with more notes so <laughs> a bit cheating but uh, i'm curious if it really works like sami says so extended piano um like that and like that and my extended piano <clears throat> it's gonna need more notes so i'm gonna need to take 
So is this value really this one doubled? Let's see if I Yeah, okay. I think this might work. So what I'm gonna do here is say uh, for i starting at 1, i less than um, how many do I have here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Less or equal to 6 i plus plus I'm going to say add to this array um, <clears throat> the value at i multiplied by 2 so this is going to multiply this one by 2 because this is here already so this by 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 all of these and basically that gives me some more notes it's gonna give me an even upper re let's call it like that <laughs> if somebody who knows music is watching now <laughs> they're gonna say I'm, I'm, I'm silly I don't know uh, music okay maybe I want to have this third do also here so I'm gonna have this going until 7 um, okay now if I refresh the page here this looks horrible maybe um, I multiply this I, I change I take the remainder when I divide by three then I have three rows yeah it's better but I would like to start earlier and spread them apart a bit more uh, yeah something like that this hasn't really been well well thought out I mean I'm doing messy things here but I just want to get things done so many things done that's kind of the whole point of this uh, code is not horrible because it does have some kind of structure and allows me to do some things quite quickly but it's far from good <laughs> like really far from good uh, I could write much better if I would uh, refactor this but I would need a lot of time for that to think what it works and my mind now just starts to fail Let's see, does it work? I didn't try it yet. Error. <laughs> oh, um, I modified this musical note to have a delay.
<laughs> kind of high pitch, but uh, you can do more with this. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's an extended piano. <clears throat> I'm just gonna leave it like that and go back to my sound effects. Okay, I want to try to make the engine noise. So actually engine noise should be kind of easy, uh, I hope. I'm gonna copy the sound, the simple sound. Uh, I'm gonna call it engine. And um, oh boy, I have so many files open here. I think I need to start closing many, many, many. After. <laughs> yeah. Um, engine. Engine. And um, in the sound, what I'm going to do is, um, okay, display sound, I already have it defined somewhere in the sound um, file. Uh, but this hard-coded frequency is something I want to get rid of. So I'm going to say here the given frequency, I put it there. The past project still works, so it's backwards compatible. And here I don't need the function, I have it already. But I'm going to play... a frequency, let's say a frequency of 300. Now, um, when I go doesn't really sound like an engine, but I think that it's not too hard for me to mess up music. <laughs> so if I play two sounds in a bad frequency, I'm hoping that it's going to have some effect. Yeah, not good. Mm. Volume, I want a lower volume. So my sound here is going to have volume. And um, ah, it's this gain that I don't have in this. Uh, object yeah I don't know how to do this nicely I don't need this kind of uh, soft noise for this I would like this one I'm just gonna copy it I think uh, I need too many parameters here. I need a duration again. Uh, I don't want it to be hard coded to one. I could update the other one. Mm. But the gain. So the problem is I'm playing two notes uh, with the same maximum volume, and that's basically exceeding maximum volume by by two and it's really loud and I don't want that uh, engine noise should also be this kind of uh, like almost like a background noise and that's pretty much what I aim at getting uh, so 
I need a gain here similar to that uh, musical note. Let's try to get it. I'm just going to uh, put its value to some <coughs> volume and uh, <coughs> I don't need to ramp it I think in any way so this is the volume the duration let's give it like two seconds and um, my game gain node so how this did this go the gain connects to the destination the oscillator connects to the gain okay um, this is bad uh, play engine no Okay, play engine sound, play engine sound. I don't need these, I need just the duration. I need just the duration. The volume is going to be half at least. Um, like that uh, and here I'm going to connect not one oscillator but two oscillators to the gain node the second oscillator yeah the second oscillator is going to have a different frequency and I will just try here uh, hard-coded values so I don't want to have too many of these uh, oscillators, so one, two, two should be enough, and I don't loop for it. I just make it messy like that. But uh, the thing is, I want to play the engine for some kind of duration, and uh, I'm just gonna tweak the values here until it sounds until it sounds good. And now my gain uh, has a reduced volume, so. Let, let's see if this had an effect. It's kind of like an engine. But um, let's see if I can get it even more out of tune. Yeah. Wonder what happens if I change the function type for one of them. Okay, I'm not gonna do that anymore. Maybe I even lower this volume even more. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, this is good, but maybe even lower the volume. Okay, so I'm thinking about using these to make some kind of game. But now before I make any game, I want to make a whiteboard app, something where I can draw on because I don't like drawing in paint. It's not very helpful for me. So uh, let's make a whiteboard app out of some very simple project here like maybe the first project let's start with the starry night 
and call it whiteboard. So this whiteboard um, I plan to draw on and uh, of course, <laughs> well, that's why this is what the app is going to be for drawing. But um, I want to also use it to get coordinates of different points when I'm going to design characters and things like that. So it's going to help me do that thing that I did at the beginning in uh, paint where I didn't know what coordinates the constellation had. So this is going to speed up things a lot after I, I get it done, this whiteboard. That's kind of the main idea. And um, OK, this will need a little work, I think, but let's see. Hmm. So this stars, I don't need stars. I need to draw frame. OK. So in my frame, hmm, draw dark background. No, I don't think I need this. I don't need this. <laughs> I don't need this. It's already somewhere. But I will need more event listeners that I don't have implemented yet. So I'm going to have to go to my project. Where is it? it starts to be quite many files here. Hard to manage. Hmm. Uh, mouse move. I need something for mouse move. And um, I'm going to get the location again on mouse move. I don't need to log these anymore. Better remove them now. Um, and I'm going to call a move function. Uh, this is not defined, uh, but it will be overwritten by the whiteboard app. Click is not good. Click is like that but I want mouse down I want mouse down so that when the mouse is down um, the line is going to be drawn so mouse down the location is here down um, and mouse up now the problem with mouse up I'll get back to this later. So these are empty functions, but uh, they are, I will overwrite them soon. And the idea in the whiteboard is that I don't need click, I think, or Hmm. Let's see. I think I need just these. So maybe I create a mouse object. And I'm going to say here, do I write it like this? No. Uh, location. Uh, let's start it with uh, zero zero and uh, pressed uh, false so I have an object simple object with uh, a location and a pressed value and when I do the down uh, this mouse uh, location is equal to location so this is something um, Yeah, um, this mouse pressed is equal to true. Now, when I lift it up, the pressed 
is going to change to false and when I move I'm gonna do the drawing so So this draw frame is not really helping me much here, is it? Hmm. Okay, maybe a different strategy. Old location, new location. And when I'm moving, Here, uh, my old location becomes the current location, and the new location is the parameter from here. Yeah, so I think that if I do this. <clears throat> okay all location is this location mouse location that and in the draw frame if this mouse pressed is equal to true uh, this context uh, move to this mouse uh, old location line to location so I'm just drawing a line here and uh, probably I need to do this some of the things could be optimized more, I think. Mm. But let's just see what happens. And, um, well, I don't know. I think many bugs or some errors are going to be here. Yeah, I don't even know what's happening anymore. No, this is not, not the good behavior. So I'm... because of this way I implemented the handling here in the gallery this won't work I would need to clear the canvas mm -hmm. clear background on each frame Oops. I need to clear background on each frame, but uh, this is not enough. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, this move to, I need to separate the values, the array values into two uh, parameters there. Okay, you can actually see a small line coming behind me. The problem is... I 
I would need to record everything that I draw, don't I? something works uh, this line is here hmm. this old location this kind of strategy with the mouse won't work because of how I um, remove these highlights there hmm. <clears throat> what to do, what to do. I know what to do, I think. <coughs> um, I'll use one of these temporary canvases again. A temporary canvas. <coughs> And then I draw this on the temporary canvas um, yeah like that but then um <clears throat> so this is okay <clears throat> i'm gonna take the image data of the temporary canvas and put it over the canvas so i have two two of them the one that i'm drawing and I can actually make a smoother shape if I do this check here. Um, and the drawing here. Because this frame updates every uh, 30 milliseconds but the move can trigger every time I move the mouse so it could be even faster than 30 milliseconds and if you draw a very quick line uh, it may look very very rough so I'm gonna hope for the best yes yes so what happens here uh, I'm clearing everything and I'm redrawing something from another canvas here so I'm not losing uh, the things I'm putting on the canvas because uh, there is a separate canvas for that so now I'm tolerating this um, general behavior that I, that I implemented a while ago uh, in this way and I just want now to stroke using some thicker line
Yeah, this looks nicer. Uh, can I draw using my tablet? I wonder. Yeah, okay, great. Mm. The clicking doesn't work. Uh, if I want the point, I need to make it a small line. So this is now a small issue. <clears throat> I'm not sure if I need to fix this really. point basically would have no thickness but here I have lines with thickness so okay I'm kind of happy with this and I could go and make some more things here uh, I could generate some buttons to change the colors let's do that I want colors I want some kind of colors at least so <clears throat> Where is my piano? I'm gonna try to copy from here some things that make the buttons. I hope this is not too much trouble. I need another canvas for the buttons now for the color trick yeah um, let's see what else I will need this kind of for loop so to generate some buttons or if I don't need the for loop I will need some kind of way to define several buttons mm. okay um, colors Let's make uh, black. Simple array. Gray and red. I think this is enough for me. Simple whiteboard, <laughs> simple colors. Going through all of them. And generating a polygon. Now this uh, has to be the button context. Temporary context is now the other thing that makes me lets me draw the things. The buttons frequency no. Uh, now it has color. The color is going to be colors of I. Colors length here, and the map. Um, no, um, WB color because color is something else. So whiteboard color is equal to this. And then the color map for the heat detection is there. Really confusing, but it should work. Yeah. Okay. So what happens if I refresh the page? Uh, error. Note names. No. I don't need any name. I'm going to just put empty string there and it should not display anything. 
okay but it's not showing my buttons anywhere why <clears throat> uh, they are white aren't they mm. no uh, maybe I'm not drawing them draw frame I need to draw them yes of course so in the whiteboard on every frame clearing the background putting the image data drawing the buttons on top of the image data okay they are here haha uh, one of them is here I don't know where the others are this could be a game <laughs> okay another one is here another one is here I found it some kind of collinear pattern here okay clicking uh, does nothing mm, I need to go back in this and uh, copy this click function so I have the move, the down, the up, but uh, the click. Mm -hmm. Not play note, but uh, change color. WB color, so this is going to tell me which color to use. Um, also, I'm going to go to my button. Where are my buttons? And I'm going to say that if um, yeah, if this uh, WB color is not null, uh, the fill style is going to be the WB color. So this should make it still backwards compatible with the other apps. But now my buttons are colored in the same way that I'm expecting the color to change. So what I'm going to do next is um, In this change color, I need a new method here. Change color, uh, new color for the <coughs> marker. So this stroke here. Selected color No, this context Style is equal to this selected color and uh, This selected color can be black to begin with oh, Such a messy thing here, but with some comments I think it would be understandable code but uh, with some restructuring it could be a really good code so this selected color is equal to new color the one that I changed to and um, is this it? Nope, doesn't work. Mm -hmm. I'm getting dark.
So, uh, change color. Is it getting the right value here? It's not being triggered at all. Uh, button context. Yeah, TMP context is something else in this context. Okay. Yes. 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 Amazing. <laughs> Great. Now, um, these buttons need to be somewhere else so they let me draw. I locate them in some better way, like um, none of these crazy things. Uh, I just put them here on the same y-axis. Something like that. Okay, now what? Oh, uh, well, <clears throat> I have the whiteboard done. And um, okay, I would like in the whiteboard to, when I click, add these to a debug array. So I'm going to do some nasty thing here and say uh, let debug array. This is not something part of the apps really. Um, it's something that will help me to debug things and uh, to generate some graphics quicker. So this debug array um, I'm going to add locations when I click. Um, so this uh, it's a global variable and this is important because why? Okay. I don't want or maybe it's just fine like this um, so I'm getting some locations when I press the up actually so click is a down and a up that down followed by up and I think it triggers here and adds hmm. I want here but not when the mouse moved so if have um, the down is gonna say move is equal to false and um, move is gonna be making it to true if pressed then um, when I press the up it's gonna make the move to false again so 
let's see if it's better now. It's empty, but if I don't move the mouse, I get the point location. So this is going to be useful when I start to draw some things. And the first thing that I'm going to try to draw is maybe a spaceship. So let's try the spaceship uh, project. And I'm going to make the spaceship project by uh, drawing here with my tablet. So let's see. Mm, how does a spaceship look like? Maybe something like that. Maybe something like this. And now I want some points. So um, I change to black. Uh, this is going to be one point that I'm interested in. This uh, somewhere here, it's going to be a point that I'm interested in somewhere here and this here is a curve and I'm going to use this quadratic curve too so this is going to be a control point somewhere here um, yeah something like that Maybe I try to draw just half of it, this half on the left, and then I try to make it symmetric somehow. But uh, so this control point is basically going to guide me this, this curve on this direction. And then I need to do the same on that direction. Uh, so the same difference here, symmetric that way and another control point here, which is symmetric to that one. So this is my axis of symmetry here. Then after I draw this shape using uh, P1, P2, P3, P4, and P5, uh, I can worry about these other things. But for now, um, let's try to get these different points somehow. So at least P1, P2, and P3 are really important. Hmm. I should have drawn this more in the center so that I have it symmetric. But I'm just going to try and uh, see what happens. So here, uh, if I do this debug array and I initialize it with zero, some of accidental clicks there. Uh, and now I just click. I can use my mouse. It's uh, easier not to move it. Then I can get P1, P2, and P3 values and it didn't work at all <laughs> why hmm. okay didn't work
now it works. But if I initialize it again, does it work? It works. Why does it work? I don't know. <coughs> Let's try again. At least now I can try to oops <coughs> try to draw it in better in the center here. So this I think it's the center. Oh pretty much. <clears throat> so from this center location I wanted it something like this and something like that now this maybe should end here so this part not important and now this was one point, this was another point, this was another point, then this one, this one. So P1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So what are these values? Again, um, I'm gonna initialize it like this and I'm going to Click once, twice, three times, four times, five times. Okay, it's here. <clears throat> so if I stringify this debug array, I'm gonna get this. And uh, this is what I'm gonna use to draw my spaceship. Um, I just copy this here as a placeholder and um, I start a new project with maybe I copy the song no not the song the sound it's a simple project spaceship yeah this draw frame um, I'm not gonna draw anything yet uh, no clicking involved, no play sound. But I go back to the whiteboard where I copied this thing and uh, I paste these values here. So these were my P1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Now P1 should actually be 500 here it's in the middle of the page I made a mistake a small mistake there uh, but the other ones two and three are okay as they are um, now these other ones should be symmetrical to these ones so I would like to do them perfectly symmetrical here. So let's see. Um, first 
first four has to be the same as three so definitely same y coordinate and um, five same as two so same y coordinate and now this value here the difference is 154 yeah so 154 plus this becomes 654 and same here so these are now my my points is p1 this one p2 p3 p4 p5 so what i want to do is um, move to points of zero the first point then um, what was that the quadratic uh, curve two uh, and this should be the first control point does this work and the second point okay let's see then on the right side I also want I'm not sure if this is symmetric, but uh, we'll find out. Um, align to point three and the quadratic curve to point zero again uh, through point four. And this is going to be. fill here um, hmm. yeah let's let's leave it like this so I added them already let's try to refresh the page before I refresh the page I need some more points here Maybe I'm going to simplify too many curves, too many points. So um, I'll just make it a straight line like this. Then something like this and a straight line here. Uh, maybe a triangle like this. Yeah. So let's say this is a new point um, Q1, Q2, some control point here, Q3 and Q4. So I'm going to remove this array again and now I'm going to click 1, 2, 3, four times and I have my new points array here so this is what I'm gonna call Q points is equal to this and I just have to make sure that the Q4 and Q2 have the same Y and uh, okay this middle one is middle of the canvas uh, so a little bit correction there and then this one here I'll just roughly make it 250 and see how it looks like so here it's gonna be 750 and these Q points uh, 
move to q points of zero quadratic no this is just gonna be a line to q points of one then a quadratic point to q points of two to q points of three and finally another line to q points of zero to begin with so I also need this um, begin path here yeah so now I can refresh and many errors uh, this needs to be again split like this I'm always making this mistake okay this is not bad uh, not bad at all actually why is it yellow yeah thanks I'm going somehow I don't know how strong it is but uh, things are moving slowly I think I'm behind schedule but uh, let's see so why is the background gray ah okay the color probably comes from this color of the word spaceship here so I need that uh, clear canvas what did I call it before clear background yeah and uh, I need to set the fill style for it so Uh, not white maybe well it could be black but uh, the background is white I want to make it in space where the background is black so let's force this background um, through CSS to see how it looks like white the spaceship if it's nice enough and maybe I don't make it white maybe I make it light yellow looks white to me yellow too yellow light blue okay now I could design this a little more but I'm quite happy with it now so I'm going to reformat a little bit this code and I'm going to say draw draw spaceship at a given location let's see if I can do this using uh, the tricks with the translation I'm gonna make it a general function here draw spaceship at the location it will be used in other projects as well so the thing is I have here my points and these are points in this big space here uh, I mean from 0 to, to 1000 and uh, this is not really ideal you would like them to be normalized somehow and I'm doing them basically relative 
to this 500 500 point which is in the middle so I would like to process these a little bit um, now I'm centering them they will have um, negative and positive values yeah and um, I also want to divide them by the canvas size so what this will happen is uh, it will normalize the values um, hmm. and I'm gonna normalize the points and um, these other points here. So with this thing in place, um, I could now, yeah, I'm actually standing up <laughs> now. It's a standing desk, so. <laughs> I should actually sit now <laughs> because I've been standing for a while and it's good to change. But thanks for letting me know. <laughs> okay. So I'm normalizing these arrays uh, because now what I want to do <coughs> is scale them relative to this location so yeah so I need a new function scale array um, like that and I need a new function to scale one vector so um, don't want to do this what do I want to do I want to add I want to add the vector To the location offset mm. yeah um, not scale it so I don't have yet the size uh, parameter but I will like to have that one too
let's try the canvas trick. I'm going to save the canvas state. I'm going to translate to location and um, I'm gonna scale with the scaler. So now this is also important I want the spaceship to have some kind of size. I'm going to say something like that and um, after I do all these things I restore okay so now the scale array I scale using this value each vector so new and I'm gonna go through all dimensions Each dimension is going to be the previous dimension multiplied by <coughs> the scalar value. I have a feeling I should have done these uh, vector operations earlier and it would have been nicer. Okay. So how did I do it in the tree before? That looks good. So what, what is it complaining here? This context. Ah, okay. The spaceship needs the context. Uh, like that. To draw and this is not needed here because this is a general purpose function I plan to use this in other projects as well well let's see how it goes um, hmm. still errors wow what is this translate um, hmm okay well I don't didn't declare here this so I should put uh, maybe I put it in the center of the canvas to test now something happened uh, but it's not in the center of the canvas is it yeah so my location uh, the context is being translated there the normalized points are being scaled by a value the Q points are being scaled by a value then I'm doing the special drawing things and I restore the canvas so this is quite nice but um, what happens if I scale it with 0.4? It's bigger. But why isn't it in the center of the canvas? So this, I'm expecting this to be drawn at this location. I translate it there. But nothing. What if I put here 7? It should be more to the right. Okay. 
if I put one, I would expect this now to be, yeah, let's put it at uh, zero, zero and see what happens. I think there is some bug that I'm going to have a long time figuring out what is wrong. It's not there. So my points, they are between 500, between 1 and 1000 always. So if I want them to be between 0, between minus 500 and plus 500, I normalize them yeah um, I need to normalize like this so that's one thing um, Yeah, sure, why not? Okay, um, I think now it's going to work. Okay, so 0 0.5. Great. Um, hmm. Smaller, it's too big maybe point 0.2 now it's this okay even smaller okay this is good enough so I have control over the spaceship and I could even rotate it like if I give here an angle um, If I give an angle, uh, then it should rotate it, like let's say pi in radians. So now it's upside down, but uh, it can be any any kind of fraction value of, of pi. I don't know if I'm going to use this. Maybe not. Uh, Maybe I just put zero as the angle, but I think it's useful to know that this is possible to do. Okay, so this is now my spaceship. Took a while to do. Uh, next project is called Ignition. Okay, so I thought that I'm going to put the fire that I built earlier under this spaceship. And um, yeah, and basically have it look like it's firing somewhere let's see so new project spaceship I copy it and I call it ignition And um, I'm going to add it here to the list of projects. Yeah. And here, draw spaceship. That's pretty much all I need. These other functions uh, are not useful anymore. So this is now starting to look like better structured code here so I have ignition and spaceship and so far they look the same but maybe I want to have some kind of starry background 
that also moves <laughs> uh, so that it kind of looks like it's flying I have my shooting stars uh, from previous but they don't really look the same hmm. I'm gonna create a new class uh, let's call it moving star kind of stupid name um, constructor so this location uh, okay maybe I open my starry night project and copy part of this okay I don't need that this is fine <clears throat> fine 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 update um, this location is going to get Hmm. modified by the speed um, and this speed is going to be equal to a fraction of this canvas size now that's it uh, and I should generate these stars so this moving stars a new array mm. a hundred of them A new moving star at a given location Yeah, just a random initial location is fine. <clears throat> so now what I have to do is uh, every time I draw the spaceship, before I draw the spaceship, I have to draw the moving stars. So um, this. update and draw so now um, I have errors yeah for some reason here I need yeah I need to specify it on which context to draw I had many in the buttons case and okay stars go down <laughs> and never come back so I'm just gonna put back the if if the star goes down I'm just gonna uh, make it appear again from the top so now my spaceship kind of looks like that 
and uh, I can put it also in the bottom 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 of this maybe a little more to the top uh, yeah something like that oh this was actually separate project it's not a different project it's not ignition uh, it's star field or what did I warp speed something like that no space flight space flight uh, JS Space flight, space flight. So this is now here, and ignition project, which is a different one. Um, I don't need the moving star; it's been defined. Uh, I will add them here in the same way. So a little bit redundant code, but not that much. And I refresh here the page. Looks pretty much the same. Nothing nothing changes but um, in this ignition I want to add the fire somehow so let me close many of these too many projects open here and I'm gonna open the burning forest because that's where I used the fire last time and I don't remember how I did it Okay, interesting. Uh, a separate canvas for the fire. Draw frame. Yeah, here I'm drawing the frame. Hmm. see so I'm gonna copy this in the ignition project um, yeah and then with this fire I don't need to modify the path let's just leave it in place I will draw the first frame of the fire and um, I guess I need to do this thing <laughs> hoping for the best an error hmm. oh I'm missing the fire context somewhere this Okay, where is my fire? There is no fire. Mm -hmm. Does the fire have a given path? Yes.
let's not draw the stars and the uh, moving stars uh, and the spaceship it's not here why is this not being drawn so I'm making a new canvas I'm putting the fire on this new canvas I get the context for this and in the draw frame maybe Okay. Hmm. Yeah, it's really kind of bad. So my coding structure is not really good. But I think refactoring, uh, I'm tired and it would take too long time. Uh, probably I wouldn't even get it good enough. So some of the code is structure is not as I would want it to be but I'm gonna deal with it so um, this clear background okay this is something that before was uh, a solid background here a dark background okay um, hmm. okay now fire is there and the spaceship is there yay okay but this fire is way too big so this radius mm, mm -hmm. I want to change this radius somehow, but still make it backwards compatible. So when I'm generating new flame here, I'm going to say size. It's initialized with 80. It's passed by here and done like that so now in the ignition I'm going to new fire and let's make it smaller like 20 and see how it looks like doesn't work what did I do so this fire Mm -hmm. So this is default value here, uh, but if I give it the size, it should have a size. Hmm. Oh, I am behind schedule <laughs> quite a lot. <laughs> But let's see. I'm hoping that something is gonna become better. Hmm. I'm a little sad because uh, this stream is gonna disappear. So YouTube, after 12 hours, it doesn't save the stream anymore. I tested yesterday and I didn't feel like breaking this into many parts. So the stream goes away but I'm recording it also on the computer, so I will upload it again, I guess. But it's gonna be stupid. It's uh, me talking to a non-existing chat. <laughs> so, yeah. Maybe I should try to save this chat before I end it somehow. Let's see. So, mm hmm. -hmm. 
what is wrong with it in the ignition I have a fire fire canvas and the size okay I do that I change the value here and then I have a constructor for the flame that takes the size and the radius is going to be this given size so what is the problem hmm. it being dark Fire jazz. So in fire jazz is the problem. No. Yeah, I could have started a new one, but then I had to changed many settings and send new posts with new links yeah, pissing off when i have to focus on this thing so i didn't do that but uh, yeah <laughs> okay if i don't initialize this ignition project what happens do i get an error or not yes okay wow okay no errors now but errors now so what changed this size okay this size is 80 size size I don't get it. Oh, this is before the size is initialized. Could it be this? 
Okay. Yeah. So now I can re-enable this ignition project. And now the flame is smaller. But I also want to make it uh, upside down. So maybe when I draw the frame of the fire thing, I'm gonna um, fire draw frame and then adding this to the canvas maybe before drawing it I'm gonna say this fire context uh, rotate pi pi I'm gonna put save before, rotate it, and restore after I do it. So basically this canvas manipulation there. Nope, something weird happened. My point is standing still. Hmm. Okay, so this doesn't work. not exactly sure why it doesn't work but um, I think I will just fix it some other way so where I'm making this fire I give it an angle here also or let's just say another argument that says upside down and if it's upside down If it's upside down, then this update is going to have a parameter here um, like that. And um, if it's upside down, then I'm gonna do a plus here <coughs> so now it's going down like that but the location where I want the flames to generate so this has to change and I think this is easy to do I did it before already when I was setting a new value for the path here so pretty much the idea is uh, in the ignition uh -huh. mm. 
yeah so this fire Um, it's just gonna be in one location and this is gonna be the same location as the spaceship so one element yeah yeah it should be fine but it's not Yay! Okay, something here. Great. Well, now I have ignition, but maybe the size of the flame could be bigger. Hmm. Yeah, okay. And initial location. I think needs to be this value somehow. So start location can be here and here hmm. um, yeah this fire path thingy uh, it needs to be added also when I define the fire immediately before it's being drawn I think this will it didn't fix it it's still there, a small piece of flame for some reason. Hmm. So when the fire is defined, it has a path there. Okay, because of this draw frame. Mm-hmm part of the constructor there. Yeah, I don't like it. <laughs> um, I do a very messy thing. If it's upside down means that it's coming from this uh, ignition project and um, it exists. So I don't want to draw the frame on this one, but uh, yeah, so it's fine. <laughs> 